The story begins with the siege of the demon king's palace. Demonic creatures fight against people, and they fight tooth and nail. People lost in this battle, because the demons were much stronger. The ancient creatures spared no one, and mercilessly destroyed all people in their path. The attack of the monsters was too strong, the knights could only pray for success, and dreamed of defeating the demon king. The battle with the demon king took place all day long, and no one knew whether they would be able to defeat him in the end. Events continue to take place in the demon king's palace. Brave warriors fought against the strongest demonic creatures in the palace. Several of the strongest warriors were able to get to the demon king and wanted to overthrow him from the throne. The main demon immediately recognized the hero, and understood that if he killed him, he would finally be able to take possession of this land again and would be the ruler of the whole world. The main character did not want to let him do this, because he longed to defeat the demon king named Moliati. The impudent demon, in turn, wanted to end this fight and start fighting as soon as possible. But the hero was only in the process of creation. As it turned out, the main character's name is Shuang Shue. He is a guy, he is 25 years old, and he makes a living by drawing manhua. And unfortunately, it so happened that today he lost his job. The boss did not appreciate his manhua, because every day the number of readers decreased, the rating dropped to 4-8, the number of likes, comments and bookmarks also decreased greatly, which is why he was ordered to draw the last chapter today and go to hell from here. The hero used to be treated like a puppy that follows orders, but one day he wanted to make them regret it. Then he promised himself that he would draw a comic that would be simply amazing. The weather outside was terrible and there was heavy rain. Suddenly, lightning struck straight into the building, which was an extremely strange phenomenon. Due to a lightning strike, the light immediately began to gradually disappear. Suddenly, it ended up disappearing completely, there was no electricity in the entire room. Unfortunately, due to the shutdown, all drawing progress was lost because nothing was saved, even the gods got in the way of the hero. A moment later, the computer screen suddenly turned on, although there was still no light in the room. This phenomenon greatly surprised the guy, because he had never seen anything like this before. After looking at the lamp, Shuang Shue found that there was indeed no electricity. In surprise, he continued to look at the monitor, and did not understand why it turned on. Upon touching the monitor, unknown phenomena began to occur and purple lightning appeared around it. The entire room was dotted with colorful lightning, and the main character began to scream in fear. The stunned guy literally begged him to help, because he thought that now his life would come to an end. Even on the street it was clear that a very bright light was spreading in the room. But some time later, the monitor stopped glowing so brightly. Unexpectedly, an unknown phenomenon appeared in front of Shuang Shue, and it was the moon, she is the guardian of the boundaries of the Manhua world. The moon welcomed him to the world of the Manhua hero fights the demon king, the current rating is currently 4-8. The caretaker of the worlds began the transformation of the guest, and wanted to transfer him to another world. Having warned the guy, the mysterious creature began to turn the main character into a character from a Manhua. Experiencing severe stress, the guy felt incredible heat, and it felt like he was burning. Fortunately, the transformation was successfully completed, which is why the system now warned the guest to enjoy the journey. Not understanding what was happening, the hero began to fall in an unknown direction and screamed in fear. Looking at the surroundings around him, he saw that this was the Pant Continent, and he had truly entered the world of Manhua. The rapid fall continued, and around him there were many different creatures, dragons and knights. Suddenly, one of the knights discovered that something was falling from the sky. The battle on the continent continued, and an unknown object from the sky flew straight towards the demon king's castle. This object was the main character, who was screaming and experiencing severe panic. Landing directly on the sky island, there was a gigantic explosion that was literally blinding in its power. The great happiness of the castle was destroyed by the fall, and it was unknown whether an ordinary guy survived after this. Shuang Shue still landed, sitting on the floor and screaming in pain, he thought he got it because he didn't sleep at night because of this manhua, which is why he thought it was just a bad dream. The panic did not stop, because the guy understood that he was dreaming that he was in his own manhua, and perhaps in the next part he could write a story about immersion. Suddenly, someone decided to turn to the guy sitting on the floor. It was a knight who realized that a second-class soldier was standing in front of him, and somehow he broke through the barrier of the demon king, and even smashed his palace into pieces. Seeing the armor on himself, 
the main character realized that he had really transformed from the character of his Manhua. His feelings were truly real, and the Manhua felt like real life. In front of Shuang Shue now stood one of the most powerful demons, namely Moliati. Even the demon king didn't understand where this bug came from, right now he wanted to deal with it. The surprised girl behind exclaimed and wanted to know why the soldier froze in one place and did not move. Angry, she shouted that the hero was about to fight the demon king, standing right between them, he was doomed to death, so he quickly needed to leave there, this girl's name was Tia. All this meant that in a few seconds the battle would begin between the main character and the main villain in the world of this manhua. Thus, Ying Shue realized that the demon would attack now. This is exactly what the scoundrel began to do, he took out his huge sword, and with a smile on his face began to attack. Trying to defend himself with his hands, the hero shouted that he was their creator and ordered no one to approach. The battle had to take place, and the main character in the manhua world rushed into battle. Coming closer, a terrible battle took place, in which only one person would survive. Feeling very anxious, the guy watched the battle all the time. But unfortunately, the outcome was a foregone conclusion, because the main character of the Manhua world was seriously wounded. Alarmed, Tia screamed Yashu's name, hoping that he would respond. There was no answer, because the brave warrior was no longer a resident, and the lifeless body began to fall to the ground. The gloating demon came closer and closer and felt the taste of victory. No one could believe that this happened, since everyone considered Yaja the strongest warrior in this world, but he was defeated. Tia couldn't understand why Yashu decided to save the stranger, because if he dies, no one can defeat the demon king. The heroic warrior could not understand why he did this, and his body seemed to be paralyzed, he could not move at all. Yashu literally felt that for this guy, he had to do anything, even die. To save him. Closing his eyes, he said at the last moment that the stranger must protect this world. Even more alarmed, Shuang Shue continued to call for the hero to rise up and live. Suddenly, danger notices began to appear all over the world. Observing everything that was happening, the guy saw that the sudden death of the main male character Yashu led to a decrease in the rating to 3 4. Ratings are lower than stable indicators. The system also warned that the world called the hero fights the demon king will soon collapse. Screams could be heard throughout the entire castle, because everyone wanted the Manhua hero to live. Suddenly, the demon king ordered to stop whining. Moliyadi said that the hero died at his hands, and this, one might say, was a contribution to the reign of the great king. Grieving over the fallen warrior, Tia shouted to the scoundrel that he was cruel and not worthy to be the ruler of the world. The demonic creature didn't think so, because those fools sealed him for 1000 years, and they said the same thing, only now they are all dead, and he is still alive. Realizing the seriousness of the situation, the guy understood that Moliyati was angry, and now was clearly not the time to anger him. The hero of this world was dead, and now no one could stop the main villain, now he believed that the whole world would be at his feet. But no one thought of giving up, Tia exclaimed that despite being the hero of the dead, the army of her kingdom would not give up so easily. The enraged girl shouted that this scoundrel should not even think about ruling the world. The demon didn't seem to care about this, and he believed that talking to people was extremely difficult because they did not want to agree with him. Using just one attack, he was easily able to destroy the girl, leaving her not a single chance. The malicious scoundrel slammed Tia into the wall, and she could not even move. From powerlessness, the defeated girl fell to the floor and could no longer resist. Feeling satisfied, the demon exclaimed that he did not consider the girl the best magician in the world, because without a hero who dared to stand in front of him, even their spells were useless, first he would deal with this bipod, and then he would kill the queen, in front of the state, and the troops will disintegrate on their own. Watching Shuang Shue, the demon king waited for the next action from the confused guy. The hero, in turn, could not even move, although he wanted to escape, but could not even stand up. Although there were many unpleasant places in his work and life, he was born in peacetime, and he had never encountered such dangerous situations. The person in front of him wanted to kill him now, but he is just a character he drew, and it is unknown whether he should be afraid. Using his giant sword, the demon king began his attack. Thirsting for death to the stranger, the scoundrel struck him with all his might with his blade. Experiencing great fear, the main character flew several meters to the side, because he came directly under the attack. Overcoming his feelings, 
he tried to hold on to the last and live to win this fight. But after opening his eyes, Ying Xue realized something. Namely, that the guy easily managed to evade the attack of the Demon King. Just a few seconds later, Shua Ying Xue felt an incredibly strong pain and realized that a blow had been struck by a blade on his leg. The demon moved even closer and praised the guy for dodging his blow well, but next time he wouldn't be so lucky. Meanwhile, Tia shouted that the demon king should stop, because this guy is just a simple soldier, and there is no reason to kill him. Without feeling any pity, Moliyadi only wished death for a bug like him. Realizing the complexity of the situation, the hero understood that the Moliyadi would definitely use the sword of the demon king to deprive him of his head, and he was sure of it. Because he personally wrote it into the script, his character is tough, capricious, a control freak, and his passions indicated that he likes to execute his victims. Taking out his giant blade, the demonic spawn decided to swing at the hero's neck with all his might to commit a terrible act. Fortunately, despite experiencing great difficulty, the brave man was still able to defend himself against the incredibly strong attack of the demon. As it turned out, it was Yashio's sword, and by some miracle it ended up in Shua Ying Xue's hands. It really was more like luck, continuing to resist, the hero wanted to win this fight with all his might. After all, he knew that Moliyadi had just injured his right leg, and he just happened to be next to Yashu's sword. The boy was able to take advantage of the moment and grabbed him when Moliyadi lifted him off the ground, hiding his sword, he waited for the moment to block the blow. The demon king didn't even think about stopping, he smiled evilly and wanted to complete the job. From the strong pressure, the sword began to crack, and could shatter into small pieces at any moment, although the description of the Manhua indicated that this sword and the sword of the Demon King are equally strong, perhaps Shua Ying Xue cannot fully use the power of the sword because it is too weak. The scoundrel saw this and immediately noticed that his opponent's luck had finally run out. Thus, continuing to resist, the main character now had no idea what to do, but he clearly did not want to die. In the real world, the guy was just a nobody, and once in his own manhua, he did not want to allow others to dispose of him, because he created this world. And in this world, it is he who is the creator, and only he has the right to choose what to do next. Continuing to fight, the guy began to scream and cry with anger with all his might, he began to shout at the top of his voice that he created everyone here. Unable to withstand such an onslaught, he decided to act, and with all his strength his opponent launched several powerful blows. Having taken these blows upon himself, the hero immediately began to fall to the floor, and he felt that in this way he could be defeated. There was despair in his eyes, because he did not know what to do next, and what exactly to do in this world. But to his surprise, after examining his equipment, it was discovered that the enemy had not injured him in any way. Suddenly, it turned out that Moliyadi began to gradually disappear little by little. With every second the body of the main enemy disappeared right before his eyes, the scoundrel wanted to know what the guy had just told him. After all, the impudent man wanted to know what the young man said, because he shouted that he created them all, and it was unknown what this meant. Continuing to resist, Moliyadi did not believe what was happening, because in this world there is no such force that would provoke his disappearance. Literally a few seconds later, the most powerful villain in this universe simply disappeared, and not even a trace remained of him. The hero's surprise knew no bounds, experiencing severe stress, he continued to look at one point and did not understand what had happened. Suddenly, Tia began to scream loudly, as if experiencing unbearable pain. She screamed because she also began to gradually disappear, her body seemed to evaporate bit by bit, and the pain was simply incredible. With tears in her eyes, the girl literally begged to be saved and helped in some way. Shua Ying Xue began to scream in despair because he did not want to lose the girl to whom he had already become so attached. Without having time to do anything, Tia disappeared, leaving no trace behind her, and in her place there was only emptiness. Not understanding what to do next, the guy fell to his knees and wondered what had happened. After all, not only Moliyadi and Tia disappeared, but even the dead Yasiu, who, it would seem, should remain. After literally a few seconds, not a trace of his presence remained in his place. The entire Demon King city began to disappear, Ying Xue couldn't believe it, and didn't know how to fix it, or why exactly it happened. Unexpectedly, a notification from the system appeared in front of the main character. The system immediately notified that this happened because the visitor said a prohibited phrase, namely, 
indicated his identity, the rating of the comic was reduced to zero, and the world of the Manhua gradually began to collapse. All characters, sites and settings will disappear after one minute, the system also asked all visitors to leave this place immediately. Fearing disappearance, the alarmed guy asked the system to tell him exactly how to leave this place. Then the system indicated that it was necessary to press the control q combination. Seeing this, the smart guy immediately realized that this was a combination to exit the drawing program. And this meant that if he pressed this, he could exit the Manhua and return to the real world. Without hesitation, Shuang Xue decided to press the button with lightning speed to rectify the current situation. Having pressed the magic combination, he was surprised to realize that it did not work, and after pressing it nothing happened. The system immediately began to determine the cause of the output failure to understand why the error occurred. The whole point was that the visitor died in reality, and the cause of death was electric shock. Hearing this, the hero was really scared, because his surprise knew no bounds that in real life he was no longer a tenant. Reflecting on the current situation, the guy understood that this meant that before entering the Manhua, he died from an electric shock, and is now just a ghost. Before he could finish his thought, his body gradually began to disappear little by little. Watching his hands, each particle of them gradually evaporated, leaving no trace behind. The guy could really feel the disappearance of every particle of his body, and could do absolutely nothing about it. Then he decided to shout out of anger to the system and ask if he couldn't get out, what would happen to him after he disappeared. The system immediately responded in different languages that death would occur after he disappeared. Feeling hopeless, the guy was simply in despair, because he could not believe it, and thought that there had to be a way to stop it, whatever it was. After a short loading time, the system only advised pressing the control Z combination. The destruction of the world has already entered the final phase, there is absolutely no way to stop the process, you can only press control Z to rewrite the fate of the author. This chance could not be missed, and Ying Xue decided to press this button and rewrite his destiny. The whole world really was gradually destroyed, and only a single hero remained, reflecting on the correctness of this action. Deciding to take this step out of despair, the guy still wanted to find out what it all meant. The system also answered this question, there are three minutes left before the disappearance of this Manhua world, if the visitor died in the real world, and he has no way to exit, the soul will be destroyed, if the soul dies, absolute death will occur. Fearing such a turn of events, the hero understood that he had to take this responsible step. If he presses the combination to reset all the contents of the published Manhua, thus the world can be revived and his soul will temporarily escape danger. This meant that the guy would travel to 2022 and redraw this Manhua. The statement was indeed true, the content of the Manhua that the audience read in 2022 will be completely replaced by the version after the update. The clever author realized that this was a rewriting of history, if he began to redraw an already published Manhua, he would make it even cooler. After thinking a little about this step, it dawned on the guy that in this way he could change the rating of his comic. Although in reality he died from an electric shock, precisely because his Manhua had too low a rating and the boss decided to fire him, but if he still manages to increase the rating of the new comic, then the terrible incident will not happen, and the main character will avoid death. All this meant that if he raised the ratings of the Manhua, he could be resurrected in real life. Accordingly, if the hero does not die in reality, he will be able to press Ctrl Q and return to the real world. Continuing to disappear, the guy still hesitated, because he doubted whether he would really be able to change the course of events. The instant system notified that if the rating of the redrawn Manhua is not much higher than the original version, it will not be possible to change fate and avoid death, and absolute death will ultimately occur. Outraged by such a notification, the hero wanted to ask the administrator how he would find out the rating of his Manhua if he was now in this world. The system will broadcast the entire situation with the updated Manhua in real time, including the rating, number of likes, subscriptions, bookmarks and comments. Thus, it will be possible to determine the direction of the plot and adjust it at any time, Shua Ying Shue's life will depend on this comic. Through the screen, he and the readers will have to jointly complete the plot. The system decided to ask one last time whether the hero really wants to update the plot of the Manhua. Hesitating a little, and experiencing a strong desire to live, the hero agreed, because he was sure to create the coolest Manhua and get out of here alive. As it turned out, 
Control z can also only be used three times, no one could even imagine that reader likes could save someone's life. There were only five seconds left before the world completely disappeared, and it was urgent to press Control z The fearless guy understood that a mature author, despite all the storms and adversities around him, must be calm and unperturbed, and wait for the finale. After thanking all the readers for all the likes and subscriptions and bookmarks, Shuang Xue was about to press the button. There were only five seconds left, and the hero miraculously managed to press the magic combination to turn events back. Suddenly, he was overcome by an unusual feeling that he had never experienced before. It was as if Shuang Xue was being devoured by darkness and her body was evaporating, but differently than before. As soon as the hero disappeared, the main world began to update, the update was successfully completed. After which, the world began to stabilize, the Manhua rating returned to the initial five points, a state of stability was achieved, and the entry process began. Some time later, the update was completed successfully and the download was completely completed. At that very second, someone began to loudly shout Shuang Xue's name, as if waking him up, and at this click the hero woke up. As soon as he woke up, he immediately began to remember his past life in a world that could never be returned. Looking at his legs, the guy was surprised to realize that they were all in place and he could walk. Suddenly, a man approached him, who was glad that the guy had finally woken up, because he scared him to death, if the boss had seen this, then it is unknown what could have happened, and Uncle Ben already thought that the guy was dying. After listening to the elderly man, the author began to remember that Uncle Ben is a character from the extras of his comic, and this is a scene from the first chapter, when Yeshu was still a slave, he was digging a mine with magic minerals. After resetting the Manhua, he does not need to redraw it again, now Shue himself is a member of it, and now he is a slave, just like Yashio. Suddenly, the slave owner of Kansa Lequi approached and noticed that the two slaves were idle, as if they wanted to die. The frightened man immediately apologized to the arrogant Mr. Litzi, because the guy had just fainted, which is why he couldn't work. The scoundrel immediately noticed that since the guy fainted, nothing could be done about it, the man was happy, because he was glad that the slave owner understood him. In fact, this was not the case, Consi Lequi hit the elderly man with all his strength, because there was just a video of two slaves with open eyes being lazy and shirking from work. He didn't feel sorry for the elderly man he had just hit, and the scoundrel continued to look at his immobilized body, hoping to hear an answer. Mocking, Litsi noticed that now the slave had actually fainted. Alarmed, Ingshua exclaimed his uncle's name, hoping that he would answer him. Uncle lay unconscious all this time, and the slave owner said that he and Ben together would have to do twice as much work today. Their working day will end only when they hand over the minerals for four people, and if they do not do this, then severe punishment will follow immediately. The slightly worried guy agreed with the slave owner, she understood that this task would be incredibly difficult to do, not to mention raising the rating of the Manhua, he couldn't even figure out how to get out of this cave alive. In any case, the work must be done, and the main character began to fulfill the quota. While digging minerals, Ing Shue thought that he had become a slave to the character he himself had drawn, and there were hardly any more unfortunate authors in the world than him. Meanwhile, Uncle Ben ate bread and watched his friend work. The uncle admitted that it was he who pulled Shue here, and when he comes to his senses, he will definitely help him, the guy, in turn, did not want to drag the elderly man in, and asked him to rest, saying that everything was fine. But everything was not entirely normal, because the hero used to sit for 10 hours every day in front of the computer, and he had a sedentary lifestyle, but now suddenly he has to mine or, it's too difficult for him. If the hero still wanted to ask Uncle Ben if he knew where Yeshu was. Surprised, the man asked if there really was a person with that name in this mine. The stunned guy immediately looked at the man in surprise and wanted to understand how this could be, after all, Yasiu is the main character, everyone here should know him, moreover, Yasiu grew up in front of Uncle Ben's eyes. The system also started a search, and after completing it, in the world of this manhua there was no character named Yashio, the name of the main character Shuang Shue. Feeling extremely surprised, the guy's eyes began to twitch because he couldn't believe what he saw. At first the hero thought it was a joke and he couldn't become the main character instead of Yeshu, but then he realized that it was really true. Remembering the previous world, which was destroyed, he understood that he needed to act according to the rules. Covering his mouth, 
the hero realized that he could not reveal his identity, because it was prohibited, otherwise the rating would be reset to zero again and the world would collapse. The worried uncle was watching the guy at that moment and saw that he was talking to himself, after fainting, he became really strange. Looking around, Inshue realized that Uncle Ben didn't see this pop-up window, for him he was just talking to thin air, and he probably thought it was a mental illness. At that very second, the system notified that she could see or hear his inner voice. From that moment on, the guy wanted to find out more, because he was interested in how it was even possible to hear or see the character's inner voice. Feeling the weight of his fate, the hero nevertheless realized that he was, after all, in a manhua, and not in real life, and these are the rules here. Suddenly, a strange phenomenon began to occur, and the number of crystals seemed to increase. The crystal deposits began to glow very brightly, as if something was about to happen. And this is indeed so, because the bright light spread throughout the entire cave, and seemed to absorb Shua Shua. The troubled man was dumbfounded by this turn of events, because too many strange things were happening today. Luckily, everything was fine with the main character, but he discovered something interesting. Namely, the pit that appeared after the earthquake in the first version of the plot, Yashu accidentally fell into it and awakened his powers, from this place he began his risky journey from slave to hero. But this event was really strange, because for some reason the pit appeared right now, although there was no earthquake, perhaps it was because his behavior was different from Yashu's behavior, as if some changes had occurred in the timeline, and the pit appeared earlier. To clarify the situation that occurred, the system decided to explain everything in more detail. This happened because every action affects or changes the plot, moreover, it affects the rating of the manhua, and henceforth it is necessary to think through further actions more carefully. After reading this message, the guy realized that since he is now the main character, then everything that is happening to him now is a repetition of the plot of the first chapter, it depends on the beginning of the work whether people will continue to consider him, and this is vitally important in this case. If you don't quickly draw in readers, they will easily scroll through this page in a few seconds, and will not even read the manhua, which is why the hero should make the plot more exciting, if Yashu accidentally fell into this hole, then this event needs to be presented in a more interesting way. After thinking for a while, Shuang Shue told Uncle Ben that he wanted to go down into this pit for a while, which is why he asked to cover him. Angry, the uncle shouted that it was not worth going there, because it was a reckless act, and a normal person would never do that. In fact, the guy had a serious reason for jumping there, although he couldn't say anything, but if he didn't return in half a day, then his uncle should say that Ing Shue had died. But if he succeeds, then he and his uncle will never work here again. Trembling with fear, Uncle Ben believed that the guy was crazy and was talking about some kind of nonsense. The hero didn't care at all about this, and he decided to explore the pit. With all his strength, Ing Shue jumped into the pit, because now the author has become the main character of the manhua, and he must increase its rating. Whether he will be able to increase his rating will depend only on him, if this succeeds, then in real life he will be resurrected, and if not, then real death. The event was truly exciting, but the guy was ready to fight to the last to do everything possible for resurrection. The protagonist's free fall continued, the events took place in an underground magical mine, namely in a deserted area. All the time at the moment of falling, he watched the place from which he had just jumped. Having fallen some substance, the guy survived after a very long fall. Fortunately, the mucus that saved Yaja's life was still here, and he knew that everything would be like this, but he still almost fainted from fear. And now this slug must spit out the person that is in it. Although feeling very disgusted, Shuang Shue was still glad that he survived. There was also a pickaxe nearby, which probably belonged to the main character. It is most likely that she fell with him at the moment the pit was recreated. This is really good, because with his bare hands he obviously would not be able to collect so many magical minerals. Magic minerals are one of the most important resources in this world, the magical energy accumulated inside them can charge magical mechanisms. Just like in the real world, fuel with which any vehicle in the universe can move. Crystals can also provide a magician with an energy base for using magic, they can even be used as currency, the richer a person is, the more magic crystals he has. Thinking about the current situation, Ing Shue also understood that in a month, the demon king Moliyadi would completely break the seal and rule the earth, if the hero prepared now, 
and let there be more minerals, it would be easier for him to deal with future problems. An unprepared body could not easily cope with such a load, and it malfunctioned, which is why the guy had very bad lower back pain. Extracting crystals could not have been so easy, because the enemies were very close and were ready to attack. Paying attention to the red eyes glowing in the darkness, he immediately guessed that it would be really difficult. After all, the scavengers will be ready to profit from the main character, as if they were delicious food, which is why they began to attack with lightning speed. These three scavengers are the first monsters that Yashu killed in the first version of the Manhua. Ingxue also knew that these creatures feed exclusively on rot. Yashio was able to win only thanks to the brute strength gained over a decade spent in the mine, and Ingxue is simply a weak author of the Manhua, if he dies at the hands of scavengers, it will simply be the stupidest end. That is why it is better for the guy to stay as far away from them as possible in order to avoid his death. In turn, the evil scavenger did not give him the opportunity to escape, and with all his strength he hit his sharp claws directly on the hero's back. Pain pierced the guy's body, and he immediately fell to the ground, because he could not cope with such a strong blow. Experiencing a sharp feeling of pain, pressing his teeth, the exhausted guy continued to think about how to cope with this situation. These big guys were really faster than he expected, and they couldn't let them grab him, otherwise they would kill the guy, and when his body lay down for a while, they would eat him. The evil creatures continued to look at their prey and screamed as a sign that they wanted to eat the guy. The clever author still had one secret that he was going to use. With lightning speed, the hero began to throw an unknown substance directly at the monsters to neutralize them. This turn of events even surprised the creatures themselves, and they were amazed that the frail guy was trying to fight back. Fortunately, being the author, the hero knew more secrets of the scavengers than Yashu, although they turned out to be invincible, they still have something to fear. The ridiculous monsters continued to scream in pain, because their bodies caught fire from the substance that got directly onto their skin. Wishing death to the scoundrels, the guy hit one of the creatures right in the heart with his pickaxe with all his might, and with just one blow neutralized the enemy. But there was more than one enemy, and two more creatures madly wanted to kill the helpless young man. The determined hero asked the monsters if they really wanted to eat him. Suddenly, the remaining monster began to shake its head as a sign that it no longer wanted to fight. Only one of the opponents remained, who stood around his dead brothers and thought about whether it was worth continuing to fight. The tired guy nevertheless decided to tell the scoundrel what his secret was. Namely, in fresh food, even a small piece of bread can simply burst the throat of these scoundrels. At that same second, a notification from the system appeared in front of the hero's face, which amazed him. In the notification, the system reflected the character's characteristics, and indicated that six attribute points had been received, as well as bonus points for instant kills, the total number of points was currently nine, and they needed to be distributed. In front of him, the hero saw statistics, where strength was minus one unit, magic was pumped up by zero units, endurance was only one unit, agility was also one, and insight was two units. These characteristics really amazed the guy, because he did not understand how the strength could be minus one unit. Some time later, the system indicated that a low-level system had been detected. Because of which the absorption process began, the system was gradually updated. Shortly after the announcement, the system notified that it was possible to use the pro version of the hero panel. Now the panel was displayed completely differently, because its interface had changed dramatically. Realizing this, the hero decided that the system had become even smarter, because Yas previously had to do everything manually, so he decided to ask the administrator for help. Without wasting a second, the hero confidently pumped four points into his strength. Depending on this characteristic, the changes were radically visible, because the brick, which the hero had previously had difficulty lifting, now became like a feather and was extremely easy to lift. Also, the smart guy decided to pump up his agility and added four points to it. Now the scavengers definitely shouldn't catch up with him, because the running speed has increased, and the hero himself has become much more dexterous. It was decided to pump up the next characteristic, namely magic, after all, the most important thing was to increase strength and agility, but if there was one more point left, then it was time to increase the magical parameters. In fact, the magic value in the range from 0 to 1 is a very important point, this means that from a city muggle, the hero has turned into a real magician. After this kind of leveling, 
it was necessary to collect as many magical minerals as possible, and Ying Xue asked the administrator to activate the hero's backpack function. The determined young man realized that he wanted to dig this mine as deep as possible. With just one hit, many crystals began to fall directly into the inventory, because the hero's strength increased manifold, and he could extract resources with greater efficiency. Resources were automatically collected in the backpack, and 10 tons of high-precision minerals were accumulated, and the amount continued to increase every second. Some time later, not a single mineral was left in the mine, and the hero felt very tired. Fortunately, there was a very convenient function that could be used in this situation, although the guy was still tormented by doubts that he was being greedy, because Yashu had previously taken only one ton. Turning around, the attentive guy noticed something, and it surprised him extremely. The observed phenomenon was extremely surprising, because before there were magical minerals everywhere, but it was not so light. The barrier looked like a thin layer of something strange, like some kind of magical barrier. As it turned out, the main character installed this barrier on March 29, 2022, and Ying Xue was amazed, because he did not remember that in real time he had placed some kind of barrier in this place. After thinking a little about his further actions, the guy asked the system if it was possible to remove this barrier. This was really not a problem for the system, because the owner can remove this barrier, and it was successfully removed. After a few seconds, the barrier began to dissipate, as if it had never been there. In fact, after going inside through the barrier, there was absolutely nothing special behind it at first glance. Having wandered around the area, the hero instantly saw something extremely terrible that came into his field of vision. It was a giant monster that began to scream at the guy with all its might, scaring him, the creature wanted death for the person who disturbed him. Trembling with fear, the author remembered that this was the underground king, Ying Xue realized that he had not even thought of a way for Yashio to defeat him, and then he cut out this boss from the original version and threw it into the trash. This phenomenon was indeed a problem, because the system warned that the character drawn by the author in real life, but unusable, could not completely disappear, he was placed in a magical barrier and was trapped there. Experiencing even greater fear, the main character realized that unsuitable characters never disappear from this world, and remain here forever. The system seemed to mock the guy and gave him a limited task, namely, to kill the underground king. Looking at this giant creature, the guy thought that it really looked like a joke, or some kind of mistake, because at this level the main character cannot kill such a creature. Mockingly, the administrator continued to mock the guy and reminded him that this is the climax of the plot, if the hero refuses the task, then the rating of the manhua is more likely to drop significantly. And because of this turn of events, the frightened guy knew that only death awaited him. Meanwhile, the giant monster began to attack, swinging its huge hand in order to deal a crushing blow. Fortunately, by leveling up his agility, the hero acquired new abilities, which he immediately began to put into practice, and immediately dodged the attack. The ruthless creature didn't even think about stopping, and was going to attack again to punish the insolent person who disturbed him. Thinking about what to do next, the guy continued to watch each of the movements of the hated monster, and thought through his own attack. An event immediately came to his mind about how he created the underground king, earlier he believed that this monster was simply murderous. This is because this monster is not only incredibly strong, but also very dexterous. And the most powerful one, this horn on his head, it can shoot high energy magic beams, if Yashu were to collide with it, he would definitely have a headache. Remembering the events of the past, everything was really like that, and the hero realized that the monster would now attack with that same high-energy magic beam. The strongest blow scattered throughout the cave, destroying everything in its path and creating tongues of flame. The entire cave was covered in flames, as if everyone present there was about to be roasted by this demonic fire. When the flames gradually dissipated, the monster noticed that there was absolutely no one in front of him, and not even the opponent whom he had so diligently attacked. As it turned out, the opponent was indeed nearby, but initially he was not visible. The thing is that the hero was covered with stones, and in this way he was able to hide from the demonic fire and avoided this attack. The monster had been waiting for him all this time, and happily began to stretch out its giant paws to grab an ordinary person and complete the battle that had begun. With a giant hand, he grabbed Shua Shue and began to squeeze with all his might, creating conditions unbearable for existence. The majestic monster seemed to mock the hero, 
giving him the opportunity to feel every second of pain and fear. Out of fear, Inshua began to scream even more loudly, as he had never done this before, as if this was the last time in his life that he would be able to do this. Having felt the strongest pressure on the body from the hand of the scoundrel, all the ribs of the main character were broken. Realizing the complexity of the situation, the guy understood that this big man seemed to be mocking him, and now he would be tortured, as if this monster was taking revenge on him for being the author, and had invented him, and then deleted him and locked him in this place. Trying to resist, Ingshua lost all hope, and felt that he was dying, all the pain only became stronger every second. With the last of his strength, the guy shouted to the administrator that he wanted to use the Control-Z command to restart the Manhua. The system in this case did not want to help him, because the current number of likes was only 20, and the conditions for launching Control-Z were not met. This feature was simply not available and could not be used at this time. Experiencing intense anger, the villain tried to harm the hero as much as possible, and again began to swing his second huge hand to deliver another blow. The sharp claw of the underground monster aimed straight at the head of the main character, as if in this way he wanted to complete this battle and defeat the guy. Feeling the fear of death, Shue realized that this big guy would crush him now, even though he was just a hero at the initial stage, and had only killed three scavengers. Because of this, it was clear that he did not even have any special items or comrades, and with his current level of strength, he could not get out of the clutches of this monster, so it was unknown what to do next. The system administrator decided to help the main character and opened his inventory so that he looked at his details. Seeing his inventory, the guy instantly had an epiphany, and he realized what to do next. After all, after seeing 25 tons of crystals, the main character realized that he was not homeless at all, and could afford to do something. Overcoming fear, he shouted to the administrator that he wanted to throw all 25 tons of magic crystals at the king. The giant monster almost made its fatal blow, but the system administrator began to act, and gradually dropped 25 tons of crystals directly on the giant. The inventory was opened and all the magic crystals were instantly released. Many glowing crystals fell directly on the giant monster, and did not give him the slightest chance to continue this battle. Thanks to 25 tons of magic crystals, the king of the dungeons released the main character, and he began to fall to the ground. Looking back into the abyss where the guy was falling, he understood that if he fell like that, he would instantly break. And this time the slime won't catch him, even though he only has 5 agility, but if he doesn't concentrate all the power in his legs, a terrible and irreparable accident will happen. Using all the acquired dexterity skills, the guy literally began to jump on the falling crystals. Jumping from crystal to crystal, Shue ended up falling to the ground. Meanwhile, the system notified that all the minerals from the inventory had been filled in and it was now empty. A giant mountain of magic crystals spread out in front of the surviving hero, which glowed extremely brightly. Looking around, he wanted to understand whether he was really able to finish off the underground king, but this was not the case, because there was no notification from the system. The ill-fated king began to escape from the abyss of magic crystals, and again wanted to fight until the death of one of the participants in the battle. Feeling that this was the end, Shue Shue knew that now he would most likely die in this battle. The merciless creature continued to attack, and looked straight at the helpless man to finish what he started. Some time later, events continued to occur in the mine. As it turned out, the slave owner was interrogating his uncle to find out where Shue Shue was. The scoundrel threatened him, saying that if the elderly man did not tell where the boy was, he would kill him. Realizing his fate, the man understood that he could not tell about his whereabouts, but if they filled the hole, Shua would never be able to get out of there again. Realizing that he had nothing more to lose, the man gathered all his will and spat directly on the scoundrel. Hearing such an answer, the slave owner did not react at all, as if he did not care at all what he said. And then, the smart criminal decided to touch his uncle and do something unusual. It turned out that the scoundrel actually has magical abilities, and used lightning magic directly on the elderly man in order to get him to talk. A huge stream of magical power passed straight through the man, not giving him any chance to remain silent any longer, unable to withstand such pain, he agreed to tell everything he knew. Delighted by this answer, the scoundrel continued to listen to the man, expecting to hear information about the location of the slave who had escaped. Overcoming the pain, the uncle said that the slave owner's hair looked like a pile of feces. This answer angered the scoundrel even more, 
and he decided to use all his power and take the life of the weak man. Having concentrated all his magical power in one blow, the slave owner wanted to use his strongest blow, and thereby neutralize the slave. Suddenly, at that very second, someone decided to stop the criminal, and with the help of only one hand forced him to stop the attack. The uncle and the slave owner were amazed at this outcome of events, because they never expected that someone could intercede in the current situation. The joyful uncle exclaimed that Shuang Xue had come to him for help, the boy immediately apologized, because he understood that he had come too late. The malicious slave owner immediately noticed that this good boy himself and came running back. That is why the villain decided to punish the hero for his escape and deprive him of his hand by feeding them to the monsters. A little afraid of the consequences, the guy only exclaimed that he would not like this, but all this time he understood that in fact this man was such an idiot, and readers of the original Manhua were already discussing him. Now the hero saw that the audience was indeed right in their frisky statements about him. Le Kui immediately exclaimed that it would be an honor to die at his hands, Ying Xue still understood that the audience would again mock him for his actions. With an unexpected attack, the villain decided to shackle the protagonist, and used magic chains to do this. Watching everything that was happening, Uncle was confused, because he thought that the guy might lose in the fight. By sharply pulling the chain, Litsi wanted to pull the guy closer to end this battle. Feeling that he is winning, the scoundrel asks the guy if he knows why he chose to study the magic of electricity. Having heard no answer, the criminal explained because it is most suitable for slaves who are chained. Using the magic of electricity, Lequi wanted to achieve his goal, and not punish the naughty slave who tried to escape. At that same second, lightning spread throughout the entire space, not far from the guy, and a powerful blow hit its target. The stunned elderly man watched this fight and realized that perhaps the guy would now come to an end. The fog of war gradually began to dissipate, but the silhouette of a guy was gradually visible, standing motionless. The hero, bound in chains, exclaimed that he was really very scared. The embittered scoundrel wanted to know how this was even possible, and why an ordinary person came out after the most powerful blow from the magic of electricity. Meanwhile, the guy thought that he just wanted to try, but he never expected that after defeating the Dungeon King, he would become so strong. Shortly before this, events took place in an underground cave, during a fight with the underground king. The brave warrior continued to fight against the giant monster, experiencing great difficulties, but he did not stop and wanted to finish what he started. Realizing that he had no more techniques left to use, Ying Xue realized that he needed to improvise. Looking around, he saw that the giant monster had once again begun its crushing attack. The creature, using a quick movement, made a giant leap and was about to land right on the guy. After a short fall, the giant fell straight to the ground on which the main character was standing. Fortunately, the guy still managed to survive, but he began to scream in fear, because he thought that he was going to die. It was truly a miracle to escape from such a monster, but now he definitely has nothing, realizing this, the hero also understood that he now does not understand his true strength at all, and it seems that there is no way out. Suddenly, the system thought that the main character wanted to check the status bar, and showed him the current characteristics. Feeling danger, the guy began to look up and saw that the giant was again nearby. The demonic creature was already very close, and was ready to literally tear an ordinary person apart, ending this fight. Fearing the consequences of such a crushing blow, the hero immediately began to run to the side to avoid it. Having gathered all his power, the guy decided to run straight to the monster's head and try to attack him close. By performing this act, the guy understood that he had deliberately added a few magic points, although he only had one magic point, but that was enough. To use magic you need two things, the first is a sufficient amount of magic, and the second is a spell. And as the author, he really knew absolutely all the spells of this world, because they were invented by him. In addition, there is one spell for which only one magic is enough, and it is called the explosion spell. With swift, deft movements, the hero became closer to the head of the arrogant monster every second. Continuing to move, he jumped up with all his strength in order to land in a more convenient position for the attack. Using a pickaxe, he anchored himself directly to a part of the cave where it was impossible to even stand upright. This place was ideal for him to make the most powerful attack using magic. In order to finish off such a monster, the hero was ready to do anything and was going to fight to the end. Having cast a magic spell on the crystal, 
he enchanted it and was going to use it against his opponent. In order for the spell to work, it was necessary to throw the crystal directly at your enemy. A very small crystal began to fall directly on the head of the giant demon, and he only watched, not expecting that it would cause him any harm. The throne crystal fell straight to the floor, where there were all the other magic crystals that the hero had previously thrown out of his inventory. This crystal served as a kind of detonator, and was necessary in order to instantly explode 25 tons of magical minerals, although this was a real luxury. With the help of just one enchanted crystal, it was possible to explode a gigantic number of other crystals that had previously been mined. Such a huge explosion completely consumed the demon, and completely deprived him of his life. Immediately after the explosion, the system pleased the hero, notifying him that the mission to kill the underground king had been successfully completed. Fifty skill points were also received, as well as a special reward called Restoration. Feeling a sense of pride, the guy understood that now he was already tougher than Yeshu, who by that time had only been able to kill three scavengers, and this was more than being a little stronger. After all, earlier, Yashio fought desperately with the slave owner, and for Shuang Shue this would be a very simple fight. Realizing his power, the hero bravely began to destroy the villain who set his sights on the life of his uncle. Using his magical abilities, the warrior was easily able to break the chains that were on him, and also broke several fingers of the insolent person who dared to attack him. Looking at his fingers, the slave owner was furious, because an ordinary slave dared to harm him, and for this he would die. Having uttered this phrase, an immediate blow immediately followed, but he was not completely a slave owner, but another participant in the battle. And this was the main character, he easily, with just one blow, was able to throw the insolent man several tens of meters to the side, showing his true power. The sheer force of the blow caused several stone walls to collapse, and it was clear that the slave owner would no longer be able to fight this battle. Remembering the plot of the Manhua, the guy knew that he should talk less, because it could affect the rating. The stunned uncle was simply amazed at what was happening, because he could not even understand how it was possible to hit such a strong opponent with one blow. After all, as it turned out, not only Litsi was defeated, but also his gang, which kept their slaves at bay. At that same second, chains began to appear around the protagonist's neck. Magic chains appeared in the form of shackles right on the guy's neck, which was an extremely surprising phenomenon. The surviving Lequi explained that as long as the slave contract exists, it doesn't matter where he got this damn power from and became so powerful, these chains will still be with him forever. Gloating and laughing evilly, the villain shouted that Shuang Shue will be a slave forever, and will remain so forever. There was absolutely no reaction from the guy to these words, and he just stood there, listening to the slave owner. He began to leave as if nothing had happened, showing how much he didn't care about these words. Approaching the wall, the clever author of the Manhua decided to do one very unusual thing. The boy punched the wall with a strong blow, as if he knew that there was something very important behind it. Sweating a little, the scoundrel was stunned by what he saw, and wanted to find out how an ordinary slave knew about what was behind this wall. As it turned out, the slavery treaty was hidden behind this wall. In fact, the hero was the author, and therefore knew what was behind this wall, but he only answered Litsi that he simply guessed about it. In general, it was necessary to say thank you to Lequi, because Yashu had previously tormented him for a long time before admitting where this agreement was. Taking out a torch that was nearby, it was decided to free all the slaves. Brave warriors threw the torch directly at many slave treaties to get rid of the evidence and free all the people. It was now that all the Arab treaties were destroyed, because they were burned. And all people are no longer slaves, said the main character. The people who saw this were very happy about this event, and praised the guy, thanking him for such a conscientious act. Gradually, the shackles on the guy's neck began to disappear, gradually disappearing. This happened because after the burning of the Arab treaties, the magical shackles are automatically removed. Having discussed with everyone the departure from this mine, they decided not to build a village not far from here, and Litsi and his people would become the main labor force. Uncle Ben was chosen as the head of the village, because he was wise and experienced. In the original version, Yashu led the slaves and rebelled against Lequi, although they won, a lot of people were still lost. In turn, the hero knew that he had to do better than the previous protagonist. Coming out of the cave, all the slaves immediately saw a bright light, for many days they could not even look at the sun, but now they were happy that they had such an opportunity. 
In the future, the demon king will break the seal, and an endless war will begin in these lands, Yashio and all the states could not do anything, since Shuang Shue knows what is going to happen, he cannot just sit idly by, but this renewed world is not at all the way the hero portrayed him in the first version, if he is too frivolous, he will definitely die. That is why you need to first find out everything about yourself, for this the guy asked the administrator to open the panel of his characteristics. Instantly, a table with its characteristics appeared as a warrior pepper. Before that, he defeated the underground king and received 50 points, although he spent 30 points on strengthening, and decided to leave the remaining 20 just in case, but there is still too little information. Suddenly, something very interesting was noticed. Namely, the function of turning pages in the character's characteristics. It turned out that this only appeared after the administrator began managing the addition of points. Turning the page, the guy noticed that these were chapters of a manhua, it turns out he had been through so much, and only two chapters were published, but it was clear that the second chapter had many more likes and saves than the first. The system explained that since the hero was able to deal with an enemy that the main character had previously been unable to defeat at the initial level, the recognition of readers was received, due to this, it is necessary to continue to try in the same spirit in order to achieve greater results. The boy really did not expect that abandoned drafts would help him gain the approval of readers, although he almost lost his life, but now he has regained the confidence to make the hero even better. The system also added a reminder that these numbers have a huge role in the growth of the author, which is why it is necessary to look at the skill table. The number of saves is used to unlock skills, the number of likes affects the use of skills in the table. In fact, the combinations of Control Q and Control Z are the author's skills, only by increasing the number of saves can you unlock more author's skills, if the hero unlocks all of them, he will become simply invincible. In two days, the conscription ceremony should take place, and those who wish can join the army and go to the kingdom of Fong on a special magical airship, which will be in the port of Merdai, Yeshu was just one of those people, and he should also join the troops in this way. Because this is where Shuang Shue will be able to meet his main character, namely Princess Tia. The support of Tia and the Fong country is the key to continuing the story, even in the face of what happens next. Tia at the beginning of the Manhua and Tia at the end, these are two different girls, now she has not yet turned into a princess with a pure heart. This is why it will be very difficult to gain her support, but Ying Shue is also not the same as the original Yashio. The reward received for killing the underground king allowed him to improve his characteristics and skills, everything is very different, abilities and actions, naturally, are also different. Instead of waiting for the demon king to come, it was better to take action himself, and he wanted to kill Moliyadi before he broke the seal. With delight, he wanted to know what would happen if he destroyed the final boss in the Manhua world, looking forward to it. Meanwhile, events continued to occur in the palace of the Fong country, the guards addressed his majesty, it is said that Prince Luazi, Prince Kuti and Princess Taya are asking for an audience with him. His majesty was not against it and happily agreed, but also the king of the country of Fong, Ertaigidi, decided to tell that in two days the ceremony of joining the army would take place, one member of the royal family was missing, so he was interested in who would go. The prince of the Fong country, Bayer Luazi Gidi and part-time Taya's elder brother, immediately answered the king that tomorrow he would have to lead the army and go to the southeast to destroy the evil spirits, which is why he would not be able to attend the ceremony. And the prince of the country, Fong Bayer Kadi, who is also Tia's younger brother, said that the seminar on magical mechanisms, which they organized jointly with the state of Jinchi, will take place tomorrow, and he, too, will not be able to. As it turned out, the younger brother believed that Tia needed to find a groom as soon as possible, which is why he wanted the girl to go to this event. Stepping closer, the girl turned to his highness. With an embarrassed look, she said that she would definitely not be able to go to this event, it was the princess of the country, Fong Bayer Taya. A month later, the demon king Moliyadi must break the seal and become the ruler of the world, all of them here in the world felt this and started an incredible rebellion. From that moment on, sudden attacks by monsters on people began to occur constantly, in the kingdom of Fong, where they had no idea for what purpose the monsters were rebelling, they determined the degree of danger of these incidents as a catastrophe. The king of the Fong kingdom issued a decree to recruit volunteers from all over the country to resist the disaster. The hero just took this opportunity to get closer to the royal family. 
Meanwhile, it was announced on the ship that a real disaster had begun. A mid-ranking commander reported that this was a mortal danger for a huge number of people, and an excellent opportunity for the fighters. And they should be proud of this, otherwise people like them, born in the swamp, will never be able to get to the foam kingdom. Listening to these words, the guy understood that Fu Lacy in the original version was an insidious conspirator, but he did not value human life at all, if someone opposed his orders, they would definitely face death. From now on, the hero cannot be as gullible as Yashu, and must definitely take matters into his own hands and turn the plot in his favor, and then break it right at the enlistment ceremony, and thereby attract the attention of Tia. The malicious Fu Lacy exclaimed and shouted to the soldiers that if they are not afraid of death, then let them board the ship. The friendly cry was immediately heard throughout the area from the determined warriors who were ready to fight. They were already announcing through the bullhorn that they should hurry up and get on the ship as quickly as possible, because there were only 10 seconds left before takeoff. After 10 seconds, the ship really took off, and it flew thanks to the magic crystals that were attached directly to its bottom. With tremendous speed, a ship of impressive size plowed through the expanses of airspace. Looking through the window, the hero thought that in fact there was nothing to be afraid of, because he was the author, and they still admire what was happening, and he was also flying to the country of Fong on a ship that he himself had drawn. Suddenly, the soldier exclaimed so that the newcomers would pay attention to him. This time there are too many of them and it is difficult to control them, which is why they must be divided into groups of four people, each group will have one commander, the commander will report on the situation in each group to higher management. None of the young warriors was against it, and everyone unanimously agreed. One of the soldiers looked at the protagonist's documents and asked if his name was really Shuang Shue. The guy immediately admitted that it was really him, although he was a little embarrassed by the unexpected turn of events. The snide soldier said that now they will start gathering in groups, and the guy will be on his team, now they will hold a small group meeting, he should also come to it. Inspired, the hero realized something for himself and happily agreed to the training camp. He still managed to figure out some patterns, when he does something the same way as Yashu, even if it looks like an accident, everything still coincides with the original version, he boarded the ship at the same time and was assigned to the same group, as Yasiu. This way, the guy can confidently control the parts of the plot that coincide with the original, and correct the not-so-good parts over time. One of the soldiers had a very strange behavior and he told the team that from now on, as team members, he hoped that they would all be able to show their best skills, and if they wanted to say something that they should not, then it was better to keep their mouths shut, then everything will be fine for everyone. Continuing to listen to this impudent guy, the guy understood that he shouldn't tell him all this, because he was still its author, these people were originally robbers of magic minerals, and now they have joined the military service to steal these very minerals. Only they did not expect that they would immediately begin to be separated, and when they met Yashio, they were generally afraid that he would talk a lot and therefore often intimidated him, Yashio did not want to compete with three other people, and when Fu Lacy discovered him, he decided that he accomplice of robbers of magic minerals. Subsequently, several people were fined for a fight to the death at the entry ceremony, Yashio, who won, being decent and good-natured by nature, did not want to kill them, this greatly angered Fu Lacy. He climbed onto the fighting scene and instantly killed three people, and was also going to kill Yashu who challenged him, and although Yashu dodged the fatal blow, he still could not resist Lacy's strongest Fu. All this could have ended in death for the main character, if Tia had not stopped him in time, then Yashu would have had no chance to survive. If Shuang Shue wants to use Fu Lacy to get closer to the royal family, then his next step must be very careful, firstly, he must not act like Yashio in the original version, and will not fight with these three, but will maintain his strength, to eventually be able to resist Fu Lesa. When the author saw such comments, he realized that readers like gifted, beautiful characters, this time he will definitely create a perfect plot thanks to his skills. Suddenly, the system gave the main character a task, writing that he needed to become the boss of these three people. Fortunately, this was exactly what Shuang Shue wanted in order to fulfill his goal. The guy also noticed that the task said something in small print, it was necessary to complete this task in 10 seconds, and he was immediately indignant that the damn administrator gave him too little time. At that same second, one of the guys in the group shouted that he was addressing Ying Shue, but he blatantly ignored him, looking around. The report went out immediately, 
and the alarmed guy agreed to be the interlocutor and wanted to know how he could become a boss. The stunned comrades looked at each other and did not understand what this eccentric was talking about. Realizing the complexity of the situation, the guy understood that he had very little time, only brute force would help here, to resolve this issue harshly, and when he finished the system task, they would be able to talk again. Heading straight towards the interlocutors, he began to swing his arms in order to strike, and shouted that he demanded to make him the boss. Such a request greatly outraged the guys, and they immediately exclaimed, asking him how he dared to demand anything here. Instantly from the powerful blow, the three opponents began to float in the air, experiencing severe pain. After this, the hero drew attention to one detail that worried him extremely. Because he realized that right now they were still in the air, and if his comrades fell, he would downgrade the manhua. Deciding to save them, the hero immediately gave his hand to one of the guys who began to fall into the abyss. With the help of his dexterity in dexterity, as well as using superhuman strength, Ying Xue held two people at once at a great height, and saved them from imminent death. Although it was extremely difficult for him, he understood that if these people fell, the task would no longer be completed. One of the scoundrels exclaimed that under no circumstances should the guy let go of his hand, he literally begged them to get them out of there, and then they would do whatever Ying Xue said. With the last of his strength, the main character exclaimed to be called the boss. Time was gradually running out, and there were only a few seconds left, then the three guys instantly called the main character the boss. Thus, the task was successfully completed, and the system gave 10 points as a reward, and 13 positive comments were received from readers. Some time later, the loudspeaker told all the recruits to pay attention, because the ship was about to arrive in the Foam Kingdom, and it was necessary to leave the cabins in their groups, and then go to the deck. For the sake of the boss, the allies were now ready to do anything, the guys understood that their commander would resort to power by any means, and the blow to be perfected against three rivals at once was incredibly strong, now they, the three make brothers, would be at one with Ying Xue. Suddenly, the captain of the ship approached and asked the four guys what happened here. One of the allies saw that Xue Ying Xue's fist left a mark on his armor, and did not even know how to respond to this. Realizing that now all four could be punished, and then the plot would no longer be able to be changed, the hero admitted that he did it. His teammates immediately began to stand up for him, saying that the three of them had gotten into a fight, and Shue had nothing to do with it. The shocked hero did not understand why the hell these three decided to surrender for him, because in this way they were going to their own death. Then the author remembered that he seemed to have prescribed such a setting, they were enemies with Yeshu only because they were anti-heroes, and now he is their boss. The smug Fu Lacy said that the enlistment ceremony traditionally holds a show where the new recruits fight each other, until now he was worried that there would be no one to get out, but since they love to fight so much, they will fight to the death at these enlistment ceremonies. Hearing this, the hero realized that everything was turning in such a way that he would not be involved in anything, and it was impossible for the plot to develop further. The jumping up from where he was sitting, where the hero realized that something needed to be done in this situation. Swinging at the captain of the ship, Fu Lacy immediately stopped him. The indignant man said that he never asks the reasons of those who voluntarily seek death, and only fulfills their wishes, so he asked the hero how he wanted to die. This question really made the hero happy, because the captain noticed him, and he said that he had heard a lot about the reputation of General Fu Lacy, the guy wanted to challenge him to the ceremony in entry this year, if he really has the right to choose, then he would like to die precisely on the battlefield. The protagonist's comrades were simply dumbfounded, because they did not understand how this guy could challenge the general, and they thought that their boss had completely gone crazy. Even Fu Lacy could not imagine that he would have to kill someone right at the enrollment ceremony in front of the entire country and the royal family, but he agreed and would appear before the public in all his glory. This plot twist made Ying Xue even more happy because the general fell for his trick. Some time later, Events continued to occur in the Fen Kingdom. Su Boat greeted the audience as he is a royal caretaker and would like to remind everyone of something. The enlistment ceremony is about to begin and everyone has been invited to watch, with members of the royal family also expected to attend. People laughed and joked that they wouldn't even have to guess who would come to this event, and it would be that stupid princess. Soon after, events continued to occur in the Fong Kingdom Jam, which was the gathering place for the ceremony. Haroev at that moment understood that he was clearly far from the strength of Fu Lesa, 
it would not be easy to win, and he would have to be cunning, only now he was just a character in a manhua and would not be able to control the situation 100%, all he had to do was give up. The enlistment ceremony was announced to begin, and the princess was asked to speak on behalf of the royal family. Tia addressed the ladies and gentlemen, because the recent rampage of demons has greatly frightened the people of this continent, her father is thinking every minute about how to stop this incident, which is why this time they are so actively electing people into the ranks of the army. Looking at the girl, the hero was incredibly happy because he finally saw the princess. To her delight, a huge number of soldiers responded to the call to join the army. All this time, Shuang Shue was thinking that he would not allow what happened before to happen again. The entry of warriors into the ranks of the army will make the kingdom much stronger, thanks to the strongest brave men who will be ready to fight. The events are transferred to the moment when the princess made excuses to her father that she could not go to this event. The experienced man said that her brothers have more important things to do and they are really very busy, and she is obliged to attend this ceremony. Confused by such a statement, the girl could not even counter anything to this argument, and only remained silent. All this time, her father looked her straight in the eyes and ordered her to go to the ceremony, because this was not discussed. Some time later, the doors of the palace slammed shut, and the girl did not understand why she faced such a fate. Behind her back, all the people were discussing that if the princess's status and appearance were taken away, then there would be nothing left of her, she had such cool brothers, but she seemed superfluous, everyone thought that she was just a stupid princess who lived on everything ready-made, and she's very lucky. With tears in her eyes, the princess wanted to be like her brothers, to be useful in her country, and to make people proud of her. Returning to the events that took place at the ceremony, the girl read the entire text from her hand, which she had written there in advance. All the wars instantly exclaimed that they were ready to fight for the kingdom, and together defeat the catastrophe that had arisen. Turning to the people, the girl thought that now she could finally return to the kingdom, and there was nothing more she could do here. Suddenly, Fu Lacy turned to Tia, saying that she should stay, because he needed to report something. Condemning the appeal to the princess, the girl still agreed to listen to him and ordered him to speak. The commander wanted to report a man who had flouted discipline and defied the commander. That is why the general said that he proposes to replace his competition with a duel with him, firstly, it will be an example for everyone, and a lesson in discipline for the recruits, and secondly, he will be able to attract the public at this ceremony. The slightly excited girl understood that the old assistant wanted to go one-on-one -on -one with the new recruit, and she thought, this is just showing off and showing off, then she said that it was better not to do this. Listening to this entire conversation, the hero understood that Tia could not say otherwise, because the current Tia just wanted to get out of here as quickly as possible. Turning to the people, the girl again said that now it was time for her to go, and was about to leave. In any case, the author knew how to influence the outcome of her decision, and said that he was really sorry, because he rarely gets a chance to fight with the general himself, the princess probably has some very important things to do if she is in such a hurry to leave here. The princess heard absolutely all the words that the hero wanted to convey to her, because the guy asked whether she had decided where she would go, with Prince Luazi, or whether she would participate in a conference with Prince Katie. After all, anything was more important than this enrollment ceremony. Alarmed, the princess knew that no one had announced Lotsa and Katie's plans, but this guy knows everything, which is why she exclaimed that she could not participate in their missions. Looking the princess straight in the eyes, the hero realized that it was not in vain that she became the main character, and did not lie to justify herself, and if she had nothing else to do, then she should stay and watch Ying Xue's duel with the general. The girl admitted that this guy is really very impudent, and you should definitely find out about his past. The hero understood that with Tia it would be more difficult than he thought, and all that remained was to use a trick, which is why the guy said that he was only a small miner, and in the end he would still die, and he just hoped that he could die with honor on the battlefield. Smiling, he also added that it was still better than being a stupid princess all my life. These words angered the girl even more, and she continued to look at such an insolent person with an arrogant gaze. Meanwhile, Fu Lacy understood that this guy really wanted to fight him so much that he even decided to defy the royal family member. And either a real idiot or an incredibly cunning person can dare to do this. Which made the general think that this guy probably had some kind of connections, or was just pretending. Since Shuang Xue was looking for death, 
the princess decided to help him with this, and ordered General Fu Lacy to immediately begin the duel. In fact, the hero wanted this, although he was guilty before Tia, but without hurting her, he would not have been able to attract attention, being a soldier, he cannot stop the majestic princess, although he should later come up with a way to apologize to her. The most important thing is that this is the only way he can make Fu Lacy doubt him, he is probably thinking about what the hero's origin is, and he should use this chance to defeat him. They declared that opponents must now enter the arena. Brave warriors stood opposite each other, and were ready to fight for life and death. A magical field was formed around them, which was supposed to protect the audience. In an arrogant tone, the evil general explained to the village boy that it was a glowing energy field. But the smart guy knew that this was a magical barrier, if you entered it, it would be extremely difficult to get out. Such awareness greatly amazed the experienced general, but it was still useless, because this barrier would open after his first blow. With anger in her voice, the princess shouted that the duel was beginning. The strongest warriors in the arena were ready to fight, and were preparing for the attack. Suddenly, with a deft movement, the general jumped several tens of meters to the side. Like a storm, it fell directly on the main character, causing him to tremble from the effort of blocking the blow. Feeling very heavy, the hero asked General Fu Lesa if this was really his strongest attack, as if he wanted to make him laugh with such an attack. Statements of this kind angered the generals even more, because he considered the boy simply crazy, he had seen his attack before and then he could not even withstand a blow, as if he was deliberately hiding his strength. With a powerful movement of his hand, the general made a second blow, with the help of which the floor under their feet was destroyed, and many stones began to fly in different directions. The force of the blow affected absolutely all spectators of the fatal duel, and the hero flew several tens of meters away from the shock wave. Fortunately, after this strong attack, absolutely no one was hurt, and everyone was on their feet, ready to fight again. The knights rejoiced that Shuang Xue took the blow of General Fu Lesa, this is their new general, in order to take his blow, the strength of at least a commander of the highest rank is needed. The, the soldiers even started to believe that the main character would win because it was very unexpected and this guy just happened to be super powerful. Even the general thought for a second that he might actually be in trouble. An experienced and elderly fighter told the damn rookie that blocking such an attack really causes only admiration, Fu Lesa's honor has been discredited, but when he comes down from this arena, he will cut absolutely all the knights into pieces. But this expression did not suit the main character, and he told Mr. Fu Lesa that unfortunately he would not be able to do this. After all, he said that only the hero himself could come out from behind this barrier. Events again continued to take place in the arena, where the fight of the century continued. Shui's efforts increased several times because it was extremely difficult for him to fight such a serious opponent. Not to mention the difference in strength, his combat experience is too far from that of General Fu Lesa, but no matter what, it is still necessary to hold out. The general himself was amazed that an ordinary ordinary soldier could hold out for so long against an experienced warrior. Overcoming the pain, the hero said that Mr. Fu Lacy didn't seem to understand, because the longer he lives, the worse the general looks. Hearing such a statement, the general simply flew into a rage, he literally wished death for the hero, attacking him again. The general again went on the attack, and this time it was unknown whether he would cut from the right or from the left. The main character had to think faster, even though he is the author, he cannot remember all the attacks of such a strong opponent. Previously, the author played a computer game on his console, and he really liked one game where knights were also present. The knights in this game were really very cool, especially their ranged attacks. That's when he realized that these long-range attacks would be ideal for Fu Lesa, the strict general. It was with these attacks that the experienced general now attacked the hero. Even the wind of his sword can hurt the guy, and this is indeed a very scary sight, although Shue should not be afraid of it. The warrior looked at the recruit and realized that this guy dodged a powerful attack at the very last moment. And this was indeed a true statement, so the guy asked Mr. Fu Lacy to fight even harder. Wishing the death of the main character, the experienced warrior rushed into battle again and made a sweeping blow with his huge sword. Fu Lacy again noticed that his opponent dodged, and already thought that this guy could predict his movements. The counterattack was immediate, and the hero hit his opponent with his sword with all his might. But unfortunately, the current one won't even be able to penetrate his armor, you need to hurry, if he delays any longer, 
they will most likely finish him off. Smiling, the guy said that General Fu Lace's strength was only a so-so. The anger was clearly visible in the general's gaze, and he wanted to fight even harder. Continuing to wish death on the guy, with all his might he made the strongest blow right on his body, due to which the hero flew to the side. Such an attack actually almost provoked Shuang Xue to lose this fight, because he began to roll straight onto the floor. The pain was simply unbearable, realizing what kind of character this was, there was no way he could escape his attack now. Such an event even brought joy to the general, because he had finally wounded his opponent. In vain he worried whether the hero was pretending to be stupid or not, but he clearly did not expect the rookie to be so weak. Turning to the audience, the general asked if they had seen this attack, which resulted in the fall of the enemy. Everyone began to listen to the general's speech, because he said that this would happen to those who challenge him. And also with those who challenge the kingdom, any person who has become an enemy of the foam state, he will literally be torn to pieces by him, General Fu Lesa. Shouting for Shuang Xue to die, he began to swing his sword to end this battle and finish off the hero. All this time the guy lay motionless, as if he was completely unconscious. Immediately after the powerful attack, an explosion sounded, and only smoke was visible, which was provoked by the explosion. The protagonist's comrades were stunned by this turn of events, because their boss was on the verge of death. The general already thought that it was all over, after such words he would definitely receive a promotion. Looking at the barrier, the man immediately realized that for some reason it had not opened, although the battle seemed to have already been completed. But this was not the case because Shuang Xue was alive and was right behind the general. The insidious boy was ready to attack, but the experienced fighter immediately noticed it. With all his might, the main character struck at the impudent man who dared to hope for victory. From the force of such a blow, the elderly man immediately flew to the side, experiencing an incredible feeling of pain. With just one punch, Fu Lacy was slammed right into the barrier that he had talked so much about before. The teammates were actually very happy that their boss didn't die and was even able to win the battle. The blow was really powerful, but the guy knew that he almost died, and this was extremely dangerous for him. Feeling such an attack, Fu Lacy realized that this guy's strength had increased several times in just an instant, and it was unknown how he did it. Luckily, the guy still had 20 upgrade points left. The guy immediately decided to add all the skills to the force, and the system administrator successfully did this. The smart hero began to say that he was just an ordinary miner, wanting to selflessly serve the country, he joined the ranks of the voluntary army, but because of a small trifle he angered Commander Fu Lesa, and if he loses in this battle, he will be executed. But he is not here to die, and wants to go to the front, kill the monster, that is why he asked for support from the people, but no one understood how he could be cheered up when he was on his deathbed. The people decided to do it anyway, and have fun, Plus he's just a rookie going up against the general, and that's really cool. A lot of people started screaming and cheering for the main character, saying that they wished him victory. The whole stadium was for the newcomer, for the rookie who went into battle against the most powerful general. The alarmed princess understood that the guy had really gotten out of it, and Fu Lacy was now truly disgraced. Realizing everything that was happening, the general realized that this bunch of idiots were rooting for some low-grade soldier. The general wanted as many people as possible to watch this fight, because he wanted to kill them all. Fu Lacy got even more angry, and now he is simply furious, in this state his strength doubles, in addition, he will act relying only on his feelings, indiscriminately attacking anyone who can in any way anger him. But this is actually the key to the victory of the main character, because he has been waiting for this moment for a long time. On the ship, he attacked Fu Lacy not only to compete with him, but rather to make him see his true strength. He is very cunning, if he is not confident in his victory, he will never accept the challenge. And his contempt for Fu Lacy and the royal family ignited the flames of rage in the general. In the end, everything turned out the way the situation has developed right now. Anyone who tried to kill for the sake of Fu Lacy's glory will be killed by him at the most opportune moment, from this moment the true battle begins. And in this state, Fu Lacy will no longer attack the main character, but ordinary people. The knights began to shout, saying that Fu Lacy was an idiot, because he thought that he was a great general, and he should go home, farm the land, because he was an old fool, and never treated the recruits as people. The three make brothers had indeed attracted the attention of General Fu Lacy at the right moment. 
The elderly soldier immediately rushed in to beat up the new recruits. The furious general will definitely break through the barrier to attack the brothers. At that very time, the barrier protection mechanism should work. This mechanism should catch anyone who wants to forcefully leave the arena, in terms of strength, Shuang Xue is not a rival for Fu Laisa, but now he is trapped. And this is really a chance for the hero to defeat the insolent person who dared to attack the recruits. The ill-fated general Fu Lacy was trapped and could not move at all. Feeling the taste of victory, the main character rushed into battle and pushed off the ground with all his strength. He did this in order to attack from behind and finish off the arrogant general. The brave warrior swung his sword to make the fatal blow that would end the battle. Several extremely well-aimed blows hit the elderly general directly, which should have finished him off. This was indeed the case, because now Fu Lacy was defeated right on the battlefield, where he had fought so diligently in the future. This outcome of the battle really surprised absolutely all the spectators who were watching what was happening. Ordinary people were amazed at the warrior's courage, his courage and bravery. Now the fight was definitely over, and it was announced that Shuang Xue was the winner. The stands chanted that this was the strongest recruit who had done the literally impossible. His comrades immediately surrounded him in order to congratulate the winner on the stunning result of the battle. The main character really did not expect to hear the status of the strongest recruit. The system also immediately congratulated the hero for receiving the title of strongest recruit, and a reward of 30 skill points was received. A new skill of the author was also unlocked, namely, Control S, that is, saving, after using up reader likes, it will be possible to briefly save the user's status, during the saving time, any enemy attack will be useless. Another skill has been unlocked, namely Control H, that is, hiding, this skill is used by reader likes to make the user temporarily invisible. The system also decided to intrigue the character and gave him a unique reward that was unknown. Suddenly, a king appeared on the huge screen, who, as it turned out, was watching this fight. The princess was also amazed that her father appeared on the screen, because no one had told her before that he would be broadcasting video. The wise king recognized that their country was full of talent, the rookie was able to defeat the general, this had never happened before, but today it happened, and, in fact, it upset the king. After listening to the king, the hero asked whether his majesty was really worried that there would be no commander in the volunteer army, and whether it would really be difficult to maintain order. These guesses were indeed correct, the original plan was for Fu Lacy to lead an army of candidates tomorrow to help Prince Luazi, and the other advanced armies of the country. They have already killed many monsters, but these creatures still continue to appear continuously. Since General Fu Lacy died from the sword of the protagonist, now he will be temporarily appointed commander of the volunteer army, and will lead the troops instead of Fu Lacy. The guy objected to this order, because he is just an ordinary recruit, and he is afraid that if he becomes a commander, he will not be able to convince people to follow him, which is why he should choose someone whom everyone will follow and obey. Immediately the princess exclaimed that she wanted to lead troops into battle for their country, because such an opportunity could not be missed, and she did not want to be called a useless fool again. Shuang Xue also confirmed that Princess Taya is of noble blood, she is more suitable for the role of commander of the troops, and he, as a soldier, believes that she can lead their troops to victory, for the sake of the Fong Kingdom. The noble king decided to ask the princess if she was really sure. The slightly worried girl had doubts, but was confident because she did not want to fail the task. Now the king appointed her as the new commander of the volunteer army, and the father was truly glad that his child had finally taken the first step. And the rookie is really quite strong, so his task in this mission is to protect the princess. The hero was really happy with this outcome, because the plot developed the way he wanted, and now he has an even better chance to get closer to Tia. The ceremony of joining the army was officially over. Without thinking twice, the princess exclaimed that this guy already knew that all this would happen, and therefore insisted on fighting Fu Lacy, which is why the girl wanted to understand who he was. Insisting on his own, the smart hero argued that he was just an ordinary miner. In any case, the girl didn't care what his motives were, but she always dreamed of leading her country's troops on the battlefield and selflessly serving the country, so today she owes the guy for this merit. Because of this, Tia waited for instructions on the battlefield from Shuang Xue. As the author of the comic, the main character really understood her too well, she is an extremely proud and undefeated person. 
If the hero does not want to take her out of the cage instead of directly helping her open this very door, then it is better to let her take the first step herself. Events continue to take place in the volunteer army camp, everyone was discussing how bravely Shui and Shue fought. Meanwhile, the guy was looking at his brand new equipment, and noticed that the armor of the deputy general was definitely different, the rank of the deputy general was also different, and a special armor was issued, as well as a long sword made of an enchanted alloy, and a low-ranking yellow magic stone. A good sword was also improved and a high-class sword was inlaid with a magic stone, when the boss entered the battlefield tomorrow, he himself would kill all the monsters, his comrades believed. Unfortunately, the main character's strength was still low compared to Fu Laces, the desire to kill the demon king is now just a utopia for him, and he really needs to put in more effort. Turning to his team, the hero said that they should have been sent information about tomorrow's battle, which is why they need to see what is written there. The note indicated that Prince Luozi and everyone else were currently in the monster nest in the southwest region, destroying the immortal commander of the skeleton army. There are a lot of warriors in his army, and it is not easy to kill them, at the moment, the only way to kill them is to completely crush their bodies into pieces. The trembling guy, reading this, was simply in shock, because he understood that the enemies were immortals, and tomorrow they were going to fight them. In fact, skeletons are not Luazi's biggest problem now, the destruction of monsters by these guys is a lie, they want to take away the magic phantom stone, which the skeleton king uses to control the army. After all, this stone makes it possible to control the dead, under its influence, even dead soldiers will be able to continue to fight. If the hero really manages to get this magic stone, then he is confident that he will be able to resist the demon king, so the priority at the moment is to help Prince Luazi and his team get out of the encirclement of the skeleton army. And, after they enter the canyon of skeletons, get the magic stone before everyone else. The hero made a letter for the prince and asked his brothers in arms to send it as quickly as possible. All the soldiers were excited because their commander ordered them to look for things in the middle of the night. Meanwhile, events continued to occur on the battlefield. Prince Luozi used magic called Divine Sword Art. Thus, he literally cut through every skeleton in his path with just one blow. The mountains near him trembled, because they were not subject to such incredible power. Another soldier suggested that Prince Luozi rest because the Fong Kingdom's troops were extremely tired. The unshakable principle, in turn, said that it is not necessary, because everyone knows what His Highness Xingqi wants. Since Prince Luozi really knew his plans, the commander of the Xingqi Kingdom, Noerda wanted to compete with him on an equal footing. The prince was not against this, and wanted a worthy opponent. A large army was heading towards the battlefield to finish what they started. Seeing the huge skull, Princess Tia ordered all the soldiers to stop. Because now the canyon is a skeleton right in front of them, and they should be careful. At that same second, one of the soldiers exclaimed that it was the princess who needed to be careful. For the princess was the only person here who had never been on the battlefield, that soldier was Lieutenant General Du Lower. Lieutenant General Isla also asked the princess to follow them because she is too important and they cannot afford for anything to happen to the girl. In turn, Tia said that she does not need to be protected, and she is ready to fight. Shuang Shua meanwhile, he was thinking about the fact that Tia is considered a stupid princess, more than anything in the world she wants to prove her capabilities to everyone, the spirit of competition can not only help develop faster, but can also bring a lot of suffering, which is why the guy needs to protect her from something, something similar. Suddenly, the hero had a mission prompt, it was necessary to kill the skeleton king and obtain the magic edition stone, the conditions for fulfillment were that you must become the next owner of the magic phantom stone. The smart guy immediately realized that there are only four levels in Skeleton Canyon, each level has one main big monster and countless small ones, the road leading to the next level opens only if you defeat the main boss, and the power of these bosses grows with each level. Shuang Shue is currently unable to defeat the Skeleton King with his current strength, so all that remains is to level up by killing monsters and gather other characters to defeat him together. The soldiers immediately began to enter the cave, and the battle was soon to begin. All this time it was as if someone was watching them, and the cave was huge. The princess, meanwhile, was thinking that she would never allow herself to walk behind someone, and would not allow them to look down on her. Looking around, the guy tried to remember where the entrance was. But at that moment, he noticed that there was a skeleton nearby and was preparing to attack. The creature watched its prey, 
and longed to finish it off. The lightning adversary began to attack one of the allies using his blade. This ally was a princess who did not even suspect that she was being attacked. As soon as the skeleton struck with a crushing attack, Shuang Xue immediately helped her and asked her to be as careful as possible. The skeleton watched all this time with his opponents, and considered them violators, after which he decided to kill absolutely everyone. The alarmed girl wanted to know how this was possible, since her brother and others had clearly already entered there, but it was unknown why the monsters at the entrance were not yet dead. As it turns out, only a person who owns a magical ghost stone can truly kill the dead, otherwise the dead will be reborn even from one bone. Using her magical abilities, the princess decided to freeze absolutely all enemies. Using her freezing abilities, the girl used an aura of ice and shot straight at the enemy. This attack actually worked, and the enemy was frozen, making it impossible to even move. The brave warrior was really glad that the princess took the initiative and acted proactively. The boy, in turn, made his blow in order to knock the skeleton off its feet. This creature shattered into many small pieces, and could no longer function as before. Two warriors watched an amazing phenomenon, and did not understand how this was even possible. The team saw that the strongest recruit and the princess worked really well together, although everyone previously considered her to be a useless princess. In an instant, Tia got angry and wanted to attack her allies with the help of magical abilities. Seeing that the girl was at the limit, the hero tried to calm her down, because now they could not afford internal conflicts. A powerful ice attack flew straight at the allies, who doubted the princess's strength. But what happened next really surprised them very much. After all, behind those same allies there was a skeleton that the princess had so carefully frozen. The soldiers were also surprised by this turn of events, and only looked at their leader. The angry princess asked not to look down on her. Heroes, in turn, knew that it was not for nothing that she was the main character of his comic, and the two allies should thank Princess Tia for saving them. The surprised allies stood rooted to the spot and unanimously said thank you to the girl. In turn, the girl admitted that she had made a mistake by missing the first attack, and thanked the hero for saving her, in fact, it was his duty to protect her. But his phrase that only a person who owns a magic ghost stone can truly kill the dead surprised the princess, because how could someone like him know information that even she does not know? The hero was alarmed by such a question, and he did not even know how to answer it. Fortunately, the girl moved on and did not intend to create internal conflicts in order to continue moving, after all, this was only the entrance, and several soldiers should be left to look after the frozen skeletons. Some time later, the battle continued, and none of the allies knew how to kill these damn skeletons. After all, as soon as you attack them, after a while they recover again and fight. Skeleton after skeleton they attacked, but fortunately, the allies looked out for each other and saved each other in case of danger that threatened. There was a huge amount of evil spirits, and only Shuang Xue could defeat them by obtaining the magic stone. The brave warrior rushed to the mountain in order to launch air strikes. They shouldn't despair, the more damage done to the skeleton, the longer it would take to recover, they were just little monsters, and there was nothing to be afraid of. Suddenly, the guy saw that the princess was in danger, and he wanted to come to her aid. But it seemed like Tia didn't have any problems because she was using her freezing magic. With a deft magical move, she was able to attack in several different directions, which is why many targets were hit. Soon after this, all the skeletons that were nearby in the radius of the girls were frozen, and could no longer resist or attack. The brave princess wanted to know how her soldiers were going to pass the next levels if the small monsters of the first level were causing so many problems. Smiling, even the main character admitted that the princess did a great job, the unperturbed girl only said that they should continue to move again. Some time later, the army came to a crossroads where there were several possible options for exactly where to go. The road split, and the allies wanted to figure out where they should go. The slightly excited girl said that they should go left. Because on the left there are signs of a recent battle, this huge crack in the wall was probably left by her older brother. The main character, in turn, proposed to split up here, he and the princess were going to go left, and the rest of the army would go to the right, they would contact each other if something went wrong. Looking at the guy, the girl immediately realized that he probably really knew more than others. One of the allies objected to this decision because they had already found the right path, and did not understand why they should separate, as if Shuang Xue wanted to create chaos. Even the princess agreed after a moment, saying that she agreed with it. 
I agree that Lieutenant Shuang Shue will go to the right, and Lieutenant Lower and Lieutenant Ai La will go to the left. This was a really great decision, because the information he specifically revealed to Tia to confuse her worked, she definitely thought that he had some special reason to go to the right. Only by dividing the troops will they be able to defeat the main boss of this level, the skeleton general, otherwise, with this thing in his hands, they will never win. So the team split up and they headed into battle. It was strange for the princess that they had been walking for a long time, but since they entered this tunnel, there had not been a single monster around. Instead of a monster, there were many empty caves around, which is why the girl asked the lieutenant what was the matter. The smart guy explained that skeletons are created from human remains and are controlled to real skeletons with the help of a magical ghost stone, although these are new creatures, they still have human thinking. Perhaps they live in these very empty caves, but due to their invasion in the vanguard, which is led by the Luazi principle, all the monsters left their possessions, leaving these caves. This guess really seemed logical, to put it simply, the princess thought that they had chosen the wrong path. Looking at the soldier, the girl thought that the lieutenant had deliberately tried to avoid the fight. Smiling, the guy tried to justify himself, because he didn't understand how the princess could think about it. Just like before, Shuang Shue always knew something that others didn't know, even though Tia had proof. But the hero is always very calm, no matter the situation, as if he already knows what is going to happen, even though the guy wasn't calm right now. At that same second, some unknown glow appeared from one room. A bright light spread throughout the entire perimeter, and a skeleton began to emerge from the room. It was the skeleton janitor who noticed that all the soldiers had finally left and it was time to clean up. Suddenly, the same skeleton noticed that there were people not far from him. The mysterious creature's jaw literally dropped, because he did not understand why people were here. Fortunately, it was really on time, and Ying Xue exclaimed that it was necessary to catch this skeleton. The frightened skeleton screamed for his brothers to open the door as quickly as possible. The main character, in turn, ran towards him with all his might in order to detain the mysterious creature. Meanwhile, the princess asked the guy to wait a little. An unknown light began to spread throughout the cave, as if signaling something. And in the place where the princess and the lieutenant stood there was no one else. The soldiers immediately noticed this and realized that they had disappeared for a reason, but because of the magic used. Due to the displacement, Princess Tia hit her head very hard and wanted to know where they ended up. Meanwhile, the skeleton begged the guy not to come close to him, and also don't kill him, because he's just a simple cleaner, not a soldier. The brave guy, in turn, explained to the skeleton that he is immortal, and they cannot kill him, but they can beat him, and then it will be very painful, Shwe asked him not to worry, because since he is not a soldier, they will not harm him harm. On the contrary, they wanted to help him because this little skeleton is one of the additional characters created by the author. In addition to enslaving the skeleton soldiers, the skeleton king also enslaved the bodies of some ordinary people to serve the soldiers, their status is very low, to the point that they cannot even walk in ordinary tunnels. They are only allowed to use various narrow secret passages to do the work, although they cannot move to the next level of the dungeon, but they can move to any place in that level. The stunned skeleton asked in surprise whether the hero could really help him leave this place. Shedding a stingy tear, the skeleton explained that he has been cleaning here for 135 years, in his free time the soldiers beat him, and then laugh and watch him recover, even if he wants to die, he still won't succeed, he even tried to escape, but he was caught by the skeleton king and left a mark. Hearing the skeleton, the guy said that life is really difficult, but remembered that he wrote this dialogue when he didn't want to work. The girl, in turn, exclaimed that this was truly terrible, and they would definitely help the skeleton get out of here. After the skeleton leads them to a certain place, they will help him leave. Meanwhile, the battle continued in one of the caves. One of the allies was extremely heavily attacked, which is why he could not resist. The guy understood that his opponent was extremely strong, and they were not his opponents. As it turned out, this was the main boss of the first level, the Skeleton General. This creature, with the help of magic, could defeat any opponent who attacked him. Although the soldiers were still going to fight to the very end, and wanted to do everything possible to finish off this scoundrel. Brave warriors tried to attack him every time, trying to damage the armor of the strongest enemy on the level. But with the help of a giant shield, the first level boss easily managed to avoid attacks from opponents and counterattack. With just one deflection of the blow, 
the skeleton general managed to throw his opponent back several tens of meters. All allies that tried to attack lost a large amount of strength during any of the attacks. It seemed to everyone that this skeleton general was absolutely impossible to penetrate with anything. Suddenly, the wizards began to attack, and decided to do it as a group. Many allied wizards raised their staffs in order to use their magical abilities and strike the persistent enemy. A powerful magic beam flew straight at the enemy in order to hit him, and thereby defeat him. This beam created an unimaginable loop that was supposed to destroy everything it touched. The tired soldiers thought that this should help and hoped for a quick victory. In fact, this type of magic attacks also had no effect on the skeleton general, and he also stood and was completely undamaged. The soldiers understood that he was just a dead man, but it was unknown why he used his shield as his main method of attack, his shield looked very familiar, and resembled something. Previously, in the southwestern region there once lived a general who was excellent in defense, they said that he had an almost impenetrable shield with which he could protect himself from everything, regardless of whether it was a physical or magical attack, he he waited until the enemies were exhausted, and then killed them. Perhaps this is the same general who was resurrected by the skeleton king and turned into a dead man, and most likely he retained the fighting style that he had mastered in life. The soldiers were at a loss because they did not understand how to defeat such a strong opponent. Meanwhile, a magical light nearby began to spread throughout the cave. As it turned out, it was the main character, along with the princess and the mysterious skeleton. The teleportation was simple and excellent because they managed to teleport right behind the boss, the skeleton was extremely scared and did not understand why he even agreed to help these people. The events took place three minutes ago, and the hero, communicating with the skeleton, asked him to listen carefully. And he said that this skeleton was revived from the corpse of a general named Monty, he has an incredibly strong shield, so any head-on attacks against him will be ineffective. The princess immediately exclaimed that she was indeed right, and he knew more than even she knew. The hero, meanwhile, continued, saying that even such a shield can only serve as protection from direct attacks, so the only way to defeat the boss is to attack him from both sides. Having finished speaking, the guy decided to ask the skeleton what his name was, the good skeleton's name was Valley, he had to lead them right behind the back of the skeleton general, because if the hero effectively uses Tia's power, he could turn the tide of the battle in their favor. Events continued to happen in the present and the army continued to attack the skeleton general. The strongest attacks did not cause any harm to the general, because he blocked them with his famous shield. Knowing that every attack was blocked, no one could inflict significant damage on him. Meanwhile, the heroes looked at the princess and said that right now she needed to attack. Thinking that it was she who should be in charge, the girl used magic called Three Feet of Deep Freezing. A powerful blow was fired directly at the embittered monster to make him lose this fight. The stunned general immediately turned his head to see who behind him dared to attack. Thus, the shield was frozen and could no longer be used as a defense. The brave man also began his attack, and ran straight to the general to finish what he started. Having pierced him with his sword, Shuang Xue continued to run further, leaving the general to die. Part of the skeleton's arm was visible right on the shield, and at the moment, no one else could use it. The stunned allies did not understand where this guy came from. In fact, they realized that they were all separated to be used as bait while he prepared a sneak attack. Suddenly, the hero exclaimed, asking why the allies stood up, and ordered them to stand up and fight. The warriors immediately began to run towards the skeleton general to finish the battle they had started. Suddenly, one terrifying detail came into the hero's field of vision, which he miraculously noticed. In the hands of the skeleton general was a strange sword that glowed with a suspicious green light. Previously, the author drew a sword for this skeleton, which has nervous paralysis. But the author also understood that this is not just a dead man, he also has an incredibly strong shield and sword, which can cause paralysis, but this is too much, so you should forget about it and just remove the paralysis effect from him. Not understanding why this happened, the hero knew that he had removed the ability of this sword in the final version, but for some reason there was a sword with a draft version, which is why he ordered his allies to stay away from the skeleton general. Unfortunately, he did not have time to warn his allies, who were too close, and it seems that they were directly hit. One by one, the ally began to be struck by a sword that possessed the magic of paralysis. Several fearless warriors were paralyzed due to the magical properties of the unusual weapon. Even the main character was intrigued by this magical artifact, 
which he had previously drawn, all of the skeleton general's opponents lay on the floor and could not even move. Of the strongest warriors, only Tia remained, who understood that now it would be extremely difficult for her to fight one on one. Hiding behind a stone, the princess watched the strongest boss on this level and thought about what to do next. Realizing the complexity of the situation, the girl also understood that it was necessary to help her brothers in arms. But at that very second the skeleton stopped her, saying that the princess should come to her senses. After all, she is a magician, and if she fights him in close combat, she will never defeat such a strong enemy. Realizing that he was now helping the enemies, Vali was worried that he had opened a secret passage for the two of them, and now they would kill him, even though he was already dead. The skeleton, meanwhile, continued to mark time, preparing for the subsequent attack. Feeling powerless, the hero only understood that he could not move at all, and did not know how this even happened. Recalling the previous events, he remembered that he had definitely removed the underground king, but accidentally released him when he removed the barrier, however, this time he did not do anything at all, but for some reason, the removed element somehow appeared. In this situation, the hero wanted to understand why this happened, and asked the administrator. The system only replied that it did not know, and the reason was actually unknown. The main character lay directly in front of a strong opponent, and understood that the paralysis should last about another minute. The evil skeleton general was about to launch a fatal attack that would make Shuang Xue lose. Realizing that he had no way out, the hero simply despaired, and understood that perhaps now the end would come to him. Suddenly, at that very second, a huge ice ball began to fly towards the enemy. Turning around, the enemy clearly did not expect to see an attack that would be made right behind him. It turned out that the general could easily repel such an attack. The princess watched in surprise as her own attack flew straight at her, counter-attacking. The skeleton, in turn, said that the princess simply had to keep her promise. Soon after the words were spoken, Vali began to run somewhere and was in a hurry. The brave Wally shielded the princess with him, and thereby saved her from a magical attack and freezing. Even if he turns into ice, they will still be able to leave this place, and due to this, Vali very much asked that he also be taken from here. At that very second, the brave skeleton did something with the help of his magical abilities and turned this magic into the heroine crystal. The girl was truly surprised by this outcome of events, and by the brave deed of an ordinary skeleton. Thus, Vali was frozen, and it is not a fact that he will be able to live again. Fortunately, the hero, meanwhile, had already gained the ability to move, and gradually began to come to his senses. The skeleton general immediately noticed this and wanted to take measures to prevent him from being attacked again. The evil boss wanted to strike with all his might with his sword to kill all the opponents in one fell swoop. Using his strongest attack, the boss hit his blade directly at the main character's torso. Silently, the guy only trembled in pain, and realized that he was almost done for. The worried princess also saw that things were not going according to plan, and Shuang Xue might die. In fact, this was not the end, the hero used the Control S ability, the total number of likes from readers was 1152, and only 100 likes were used for this ability. Fortunately, he received this skill strengthens his body after defeating Francis, the moment he regained his mobility, he pressed Control S, thanks to this, his current body condition remains unchanged, even if it only lasts 10 seconds, then this period in time he will be completely invincible. Thus, Shuang Xue was able to easily defeat the skeleton general and took his life. The determined guy shouted for Tia to attack. The princess, in turn, was already ready, and said that she was not Tia, but Commander Tia. Using freezing magic, she easily attacked the skeleton general to freeze his bones piece by piece. Using freezing magic, the arrogant warrior could no longer move and would no longer harm anyone. All the soldiers could see that with the great efforts of the skeleton generals, he was finally defeated. The hero also breathed a sigh of relief, I understand that this fight was indeed extremely difficult. Suddenly, Shuang Xue again drew attention to one very important detail. Namely, he had a question about what Tia was doing on the sidelines. The slightly excited guy wanted to know about the princess, what happened, because they won, but for some reason she still looked very depressed. It turned out that before Valley turned into ice, he told her why he wanted to leave this place. He his best friend died the day bandits destroyed their village, and he thought that dying with his best friend was not so bad. But in the end, he was turned into an undead by the skeleton king, 
and was forced to leave this nameless cemetery, becoming a janitor in Skeleton Canyon. Valley wanted to be taken away from here and taken back to his village, but he helped Tia and blocked that repelled attack. Analyzing the current situation, the guy understood that Tia's magic is the secret technique of the royal family, there is no way to break this absolute freeze, even though Valley is a dead man, his five senses are completely sealed, and this is no different from death. Now was not the time to be sad, and he had to help the princess cheer up. Although there were things that he could not explain, he assured the girl that they could defeat the skeleton king, and then Valley would come to life again. Listening to the guy, she understood that this man knew nothing about royal magic, but perhaps he knew something that even she didn't know. At that same second, the door in the cave gradually began to open, and a bright purple light penetrated through it. As soon as the door was completely open, an even brighter, blinding light came from it. Shuang Shue again confirmed the words, saying that Valley would then come to life when they killed the skeleton king. Meanwhile, the princess ordered everyone to form a line and go through the portal to the next floor, because their goal is to help the advanced troops and destroy the skeleton king. Some time later, the entire army found itself on the second floor of the skeleton canyon. The soldiers dragged the ice in which the shield was located, and did not understand why they had to do this. Suddenly, a very familiar voice was heard. The princess was even a little frightened by this voice, because she understood who it belonged to. Raising their heads up, the allies saw something flying above them. It was a giant bone dragon that flew directly above the allied forces, ready to attack at any moment. Having landed on one of the stone blocks, the huge dragon was about to do something. The furious devil spawn began to scream very loudly, scaring everything in its path. One of the allies saw that it was really a dragon, and this really scared him. Even the author of the manhua was a little worried because he understood that this opponent was not weak at all. This dragon is the mini-boss of the second floor, and it is extremely sad and scary. This dragon also has magic and is able to shoot using its mouth. The giant lightning beam hit many soldiers directly and destroyed everything in its path. After being hit by demonic magic, huge craters were left right in the ground. No one could even imagine what to do in this situation. And how do you even defeat such a serious opponent that you couldn't even imagine before? At the same time, the hero knew that this was not what he needed to worry about at the moment. If the items he deleted reappeared, they would be in big trouble and he should just wait and see what happens next. The bone dragon attacked again and wanted to destroy the entire army. Luckily, Tia had ice shield magic and tried to protect all her allies. Using her magical abilities, she was easily able to repel the attack of a furious dragon. The mage captain meanwhile ordered his allies to prepare their spells, this time the enemy has no shield to block their attacks. Once again the magicians rushed into battle, taking out their staves, they instantly began to attack the furious dragon. The bone dragon stood still all the time, and a beam of magic arrived at it, which was supposed to hit it directly. The hit was successful, and the magical abilities of the allied army were sent straight to the target. The ally began to think that they had managed to defeat the bone dragon, and this caused joy. But then something happened that no one could have expected. The bone dragon was right next to the soldiers, and was attacking from behind. With its giant tail, the creature knocked down the soldiers who were standing nearby, and did not even give them the opportunity to fight. The excited princess wanted to know about Lieutenant Shuang Shue, what should they do to defeat the dragon, after all, he always has some secret way, then why is he just standing and watching now? The hero didn't even want it, but the only reason why he won all the fights after moving to this comic was because he deeply understood the characters, but the author cannot always remember everything he drew and deleted, since there were so many changes in designs a lot of. There is nothing else left to do except use the secret technique, and Shuang Shue ordered the soldiers to bring something. They finally got to use the secret weapon, and they were really looking forward to it. Some time ago, events took place in the army treasury. The soldiers arrived there because they had to go to the front line and wanted to understand why the boss ordered them to come to the treasury in the middle of the night to steal the golden magic stones. These stones were supposed to help in the battle with the monster, the guys could barely restrain their thieving nature so as not to steal several bars of gold for themselves. Magical golden scrolls were stolen from the treasury precisely for this battle. The bone dragon does not have strong defenses, unlike the skeleton general, but its speed is enormous, so it will be very difficult to hit, and Ingshua ordered the crystals to be thrown into the pit. Realizing that this was a waste of money, 
the soldiers had difficulty releasing the expensive crystals. The bone skeleton immediately noticed this and was surprised at this outcome of events. Western dragons are creatures that are very greedy by nature. They have an incredible love for treasures and shiny things. Long ago, the bone dragon was imprisoned by the skeleton king, and he was unable to collect treasures to build his nest from. He must be attracted by the golden magic stones that the hero brought here. Using his magical abilities, Shuang Shue began to influence the magic stones. Instantly they began to glow with a very bright light, as if they were about to explode. This is true, the magical golden stones detonated thanks to the magic that was applied to them. After the explosion, only a small part of the bone skeleton remained, which flew to the side. The smart guy immediately discovered it and decided to pick it up. Immediately, he thought that he had succeeded in defeating him, and the bone dragon died just like that, perhaps the changes in the skeleton general settings were just a mistake. But even if they killed after this floor, the passage to the next floor still had not opened yet. Hearing this, the guy immediately thought that something had really gone wrong. Suddenly, a bone skeleton rose in front of them and was ready to attack again. The changes that have been restored this time are that there are only two bone dragons, and only after the first is defeated will the second appear. Unfortunately, now the hero no longer has magic stones, and it is unknown what to do in this situation. The bone dragon began its attack with lightning speed, because it wanted to destroy all rivals in its path. The giant lightning was approaching its target, and was very close to the allied army. Fearing such a serious attack, the hero shouted to his allies that they urgently needed to evade. At that same second, an ice shield was created, which absorbed the entire powerful blow. Tia was indeed a very powerful magician, and tried with all her might to protect her team from death. Making serious efforts, she continued to restrain the insatiable monster, in the hope of victory. The guys started laughing, saying that this technique no longer worked on them because of the stupid knuckle, and the ice magic of their princess was simply invincible. But the fact that their mood improved so quickly is not a reason to rejoice, because the battle was not over. However, the girl also admitted that the princess truly exceeded her expectations, although if we talk about those who exceeded expectations, she still believes that Shuang Xue is a step above. Because this is a warrior who did not even have magical abilities, but still fought on a level with the greatest magician. In his hands was an unknown object that looked like a horn, it was indeed the Bone King's doom, and it was somehow reacting to the opponent. This meant that the other Bone Dragon had already begun to gradually recover. The excited hero immediately turned to the commander, saying that it was necessary to freeze that broken Bone Dragon as soon as possible, otherwise they would definitely die, because then two dragons would attack them at once. It was already hard for the princess, and she could not be distracted by such mere trifles. Meanwhile, the bone dragon deliberately tries to delay them, and recovers very quickly. They had very little time because in a moment, the bone dragon would be ready to fight. This was indeed the case, because the creature from the underworld began to move again, and gradually regained its former appearance. The second dragon also tried to break through the ice shield that Tia was holding back so hard. The bone dragons were ready to fight together, and gradually approached the army to deliver fatal blows. The main character was ready for battle, but still did not fully understand how to act in this situation. Only fear was visible in his eyes, but determination fought against fear, in the hope of victory. With every second, the bone dragon flew closer, because it longed for death to all humanity. Suddenly, the heroes remembered that he had another trump card up his sleeve. Then he asked all the soldiers to listen, and quickly take each other's hands and stick together. I don't understand anything, the soldiers began to do what they were ordered. Because if they don't want to die, then they should do as Shuang Xue says. The brothers took each other's hands and waited for the next commands from the main character. Even the princess took the hand of her future savior. The determined hero just looked at her and told her to trust him. Although the girl did not fully understand what was about to happen, she was ready to do everything to keep her and her army alive. The smart guy used the Control H ability, which was supposed to cause invisibility for everyone in the area. Thus, the people who were just standing on the ground disappeared from the Bone Dragon site. The monster, who did not understand anything, looked around and looked around, hoping to see the enemy. The terrifying monsters saw that no one was around, and there was no point in continuing to fight. With joy, Shuang Shue realized that they had managed to avoid the attack of the two opponents. All the allies were amazed that they were now invisible, 
and this was simply incredible, because this can only be seen once in a lifetime. The maximum time to use this skill was 25 seconds because the ability was used on 80 people, which is why they should defeat the bone dragons in that time. Suddenly, Inshua began to whisper something in the princess's ear, and she asked if this would really work. This whisper was heard by the dragon, and he noticed that someone was talking nearby. The two dragons looked at each other, hoping to see the people who had been hiding so diligently. It turned out that the princess had created an ice wall that looked like glass, and most likely the dragon would think that he saw his companion when he turned his head. And now, all that remains is to destroy each dragon alone, because individually they are extremely weak. The army general ordered the soldiers to get ready because they have to kill these dragons with one shot and then she will freeze them. The brave warriors prepared to attack and hoped for a quick victory in this battle. Even the main character was willing to obey the princess orders in order to win. A moment later, the brave magician Tia ordered her army to attack. Immediately, several of the strongest warriors attacked one of the dragons, and it fell into small pieces. As soon as this happened, the girl used a limitless ice wall to freeze the insolent opponent. With the help of the ice wall, the opponent was immobilized and could no longer regenerate. Seeing that it worked, the guy was immediately happy, because he realized that they had now gotten rid of one dragon. Unfortunately, it was at this moment that the system notified that the invisibility option was no longer available, and the current number of likes was approaching zero. Such a shock had an extremely negative impact on the morale of the team. In any case, all the knights were willing to continue fighting to protect their princess. The giant enemy again broke through the shackles of ice and was approaching the allies. Feeling hopeless, people have already begun to think that there is simply no end to this, and this damn dead man will now defeat them. From the force of the bone dragon's attack, even the ground under his feet began to crumble, just from a light touch. As it turned out, this dragon saw that they froze his brother, and became even more angry. Wishing death to the scoundrel, one of the guys rushed to attack, hoping to cause irreparable damage to the monster. Such an attack, unfortunately, could not cause serious harm to such a strong enemy, and the ally was in danger. After striking with the hammer and using lightning magic, the ally was stunned by what happened next. After all, when he hit the ground, the dragon was no longer nearby, and it was unknown where he ended up. In fact, he was behind, his mouth open, the bone dragon wanted to eat the glorious warrior when he didn't even see him. The allies immediately began to call for Dolores to pay attention to the enemy who was behind him. It was already too late, because the brave warrior was captured in the shackles of the bone dragon's mouth. Experiencing severe pain, the warrior screamed and begged for help. No one could bear to watch, and his allies immediately rushed to his aid to free him from the clutches of the dragon. They also did not have time to help him, because the dragon rose into the sky with lightning speed, leaving no chance to attack him again. As soon as the bone dragon gained enough height, it immediately decided to throw off its opponent so as not to rush around with it all the time. From a great height, Dolores began to fall to the ground, and everyone wanted to know if he could survive after this. Having fallen to the ground, the boy immediately began screaming in pain. Luckily he was alive, but he still wanted to figure out how they could defeat this dragon if it was so fast. The first time they used golden magic stones to lure one of them, as a result he was scattered into pieces, while the second was defeated only because he could not notice them. The bone dragon's defense isn't particularly strong, but it does have great speed, and if they can't catch it, they're done for, but they can no longer use the previous tactics to defeat the dragon. Meanwhile, Shuang Shue discovered something, because the system administrator helped him with it, it was truly a stunning and surprising discovery. Suddenly, the incredibly fast bone dragon attacked again, leaving no chance to save the soldiers. Tia, noticing the dragon's movements, immediately asked Lieutenant Shuang Shue to be careful, because the dragon was approaching him. Such fear on the part of the princess only pleased the hero, and he knew that he could win this fight. The alarmed girl did not understand this facial expression, and wanted to find out what this guy wanted to do. There was a powerful explosion that no one could even imagine, because the bone dragon had never attacked anyone with such force. The malicious enemy was still alive, and he was ready to attack again. Suddenly, the dragon seemed to notice something, and this made him even more angry. It turned out that behind the dragon was Shuang Shue, who seemed to be riding it. Sincerely hoping for victory, the hero asked if the dragon was surprised. Entering the canyon of skeletons, he kept puzzling over how to deal with these monsters. Anyway, 
he killed a lot of skeleton soldiers, the skeleton general's first level minibosses, and also one bone dragon, and it was not even possible to understand how quickly such a huge number of points could be scored. There were really a huge number of points, because during the entire time of presence in the cave, 32 of them had already accumulated. Therefore, the main character should invest a certain number of points in dexterity, this should be enough to defeat this dragon. This was indeed the case, because Shuang Shue managed to do something that no one had ever done before. Although the guy was still in danger because the dragon's tail was still active. With a deft movement, the bone dragon tried to prick the guy with its sharp tail, but he reacted instantly. Jumping several tens of meters up, Shue watched the dragon's actions to strike. Getting even angrier, the guy rushed into battle, wishing only death for the dragon. Hitting with all his might, he divided the dragon into many small parts, leaving no chance for victory. The surprised allies, watching the battle, could not understand how this was even possible, and whether an ordinary person was really capable of this. The brothers also said in an instant that their boss is truly amazing and he deserves to be a commander. The princess, in turn, also realized that this guy was hiding a lot of secrets, and still wanted to help him, creating an aura of ice magic in order to seal the dragon forever in ice. Suddenly, Shuang Shue asked the commander to wait, because during this time the dragon has been broken into pieces for the second time, so it will not recover soon, which is why he wants to come to an agreement with him. This statement caused an even greater shock in the girl, and she wanted to understand how this was even possible. Meanwhile, Shue began a conversation with the dragon, saying that he knew that the dragon could hear him, although he had not fully recovered, but now the result was clear, and he was no match for them. The dragon also had to see how strong their commander's ice magic was, if he didn't want to become an ice cube, then he should make a contract and become a subordinate. That is why the main character asked the bone dragon to help them open the passage to the next level, if he agrees to this, then he only needs to move his bones. Some time later, the creature actually opened a portal for its allies to the next level. Rejoicing, the boy thanked the dragon for his help. It really looked like real friendship, because at first glance the evil creature did not even have the desire to attack humanity. Until this time, no one could understand how such a creature, which almost killed them, became his pet. The boy also asked the dragon to borrow his rock, and he would return it when the team was able to defeat the skeleton king. Using the acquired magic, he took another bone horn from the second dragon. The surprised princess also wanted to know why this mysterious guy collects all these items from the bosses, and why he even needs them. In fact, Tia was just furious because she didn't understand how she was supposed to believe in him if he was still hiding information from her. Then the hero realized that it seemed that he could no longer keep this a secret. Because of this, the guy said that he would like to share something with the whole team, but only on the condition that none of them ask where he managed to get this information, and he will explain everything to them when the time comes. In any case, the allies wanted to get at least some explanation, and asked him why the guy was collecting some of these monsters. The determined hero immediately responded that these boss parts were necessary in order to defeat the skeleton king, literally the key to victory. If the allies understood him correctly, if they do not have these items, then they will never be able to defeat the main boss. This statement was indeed true, which is why Prince Luo Jing is still on the very top floor despite all his strength. This teleportation arch is a one-way door, if you enter it just like that, without having the key elements with you, then it is impossible to return back. All the strong experts defeated the bosses of the level, but left behind key items to defeat the skeleton king, which is why they were stuck on the last floor, and when they die there, they will turn into new puppets of the skeleton king, the princess added. It is because of this that Skeleton Canyon is called that way, otherwise it is called a trap. A moment later, one of the allies approached the main character with her dagger. She didn't want to ask how he knew about all these things, however, he hid all this information from them, which caused them to lose a tactical advantage and many of their soldiers, if he had reported this earlier, then the Prince of Lods and his team would not would fall into a trap. Looking the girl straight in the eyes, the hero said that just two days ago he was an ordinary rookie soldier, and they would not have listened to him then. And if not for his fight with Ser Fu Lesa, then he would not even have become a lieutenant, and none of these people would have believed his words. That's how this world works, if you don't become someone who will be listened to, then all words will be considered just nonsense. Unexpectedly, Princess Tia stopped them, saying that it was enough to argue, 
because now was not the time to fight with each other, they should listen to her orders, and move on. Having listened to the order, all the soldiers began to penetrate through the portal to the next level. The magical portal teleported everyone who entered it with lightning speed. Once on the next floor, the princess could not understand what was wrong with this floor and why it was so hot here. There were lakes of lava around them, and they spewed flames, Tia then only ordered the soldiers to go forward along the road that was present on the floor. One of the soldiers turned out to be very attentive and noticed something terrible that was waiting for them, namely, skeletons that crawled up straight from the lava. The fight was extremely difficult, because on a narrow surface it was extremely difficult to fight with so many opponents. Some of the soldiers could not stay on the surface and began to fall straight into the lava. Unfortunately, if a soldier falls into the lava lake, it will be true death, because he will never be able to get out of there alive again. Deciding to act, Princess Tia realized that it was worth freezing this lava using her magic. With lightning speed, she began to use magical powers on the huge lakes of lava to turn them into ice. Such magic did not work on such a hot source of heat, and the lava was easily able to dissolve the very ice that had incredible properties. It was lava created by the god of fire, Sam, and could not be frozen in its current state. In order to win this battle, you need to freeze the rocks so that the skeletons cannot climb up. Although it was Tia's magic, she felt that Shuangshue knew much more about her than she did. 